Oh, also, I I uh, invested in some shops. So if you got any interest in some high-end, personally tailored clothing, I can get you a deal. I'm just going to get it dirty, but... Because with his brilliance in business, he decided the most profitable business in that entire city would be a high-end tailor shop. I mean, does, does Lord Draho understand the definition of brilliance? <laughs> I'm, I'm just curious. Why, what, what, you know why he doesn't have money? Because he makes really smart business investments. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not really one to talk about bad investments, though. I kind of sold my soul, so. I, I, I mean, I mean. Did you get better, better than a uh, discount for it? I mean, I got magic powers. Yeah. To, to okay. be fair. So, uh, quick recap for us cool. before we uh, get started then. Yes! Uh, at the I end of no the last episode, uh, you guys went ahead and finished the end of uh, the Sable Ridge Caverns, uh, cleared out all of the cobalts that were there, and made your way back to the city. Um, and the spiders. What's that? And the spiders. Yep, and the spiders. Um, and in doing so, uh, getting back to the city, you got a little guff from the guards about trying to bring the kobold in. Uh, but after realizing that uh, he was your manservant, they went ahead and let you through. Um, Lizard servant. Yep. Uh, getting back to the uh, rector or gava, Alexandria Penn, um, she goes ahead and pays you guys out for, uh, double check the specific numbers on that. 45 total gold, cobalt heads between the 18 bodies that you had and the 27 heads that you brought along with. Um, so 45 gold in total. Nice. Post that point, you guys all uh, split up to do kind of your own thing for a 10 day. Um, and if each one of you wants to go through what you did over that 10 day so everyone knows, go for it. I spent most of my time picking herbs to make poison. Oh, also, Frostgar, I gave you the magic helmet, so you should know what it does. Oh, I do. Okay, good. It looks fabulous on me. Yes. Because we didn't have a use for it. Because <laughs> all of us can see. Uh, draw ho? Yeah. Oh, what I did, I sent my kobold to butler school. Um, I turned some of those fade spiders into uh, armor, bow, quiver, and arrows for him. Uh, so he looks good doing, you know, manservant. When he's not in his manservant uniform, which was from my clothier shop I invested in, I invested in a high-end clothing shop, um, spent a lot of gold and got very little back. Um, I also, what else did I do that was of any importance? I think that's it. I just spent gold on shops and hoped to get paid back for it. <laughs> um, I did a bit of pit fighting. It's off-season, so it's a little underground. I guess they don't really open up for the games until, like, spring, summer. Um, but I found a place. Uh, I walked in. They almost they tried to turn me away, but I got a, uh, a sponsor. Uh, who paid my entry fee and uh, took half of my winnings per match, which was four out of five victories. I'm looking up this guy's name because I've already forgotten it. Uh, <laughs> Did you get sponsored by Brondo, the Thirst Mutilator? That definitely was not their name. Because that also Could sounds like be. some. That sounds like someone who I'd be fighting, not who'd be who'd be investing in my fighting capabilities. Uh, but anyway, uh, with my winnings and my share of everything we got so far, I went and got the sword and shield that I got uh, in the dungeon uh, identified and uh, did a little dock work. And there was one very creepy shit um, that I noted, but uh, paid for my stay, so that's good. Oh, I also forgot I put my kobold through... Uh a finishing university so that he'd get proper butler training. 
That was the first thing you said. Okay, I didn't mention that. I didn't know if I <laughs> added that to it because that's a very important detail that he did go to school. <laughs> Yay, school. Do you have anything else, Ark? Uh, that was it. Okay, so Navarra was a super huge nerd and spent her 10 day in the library. Uh, she learned uh, all about uh, the worshippers of Vecna and how they like to cut off people's left hand because it's a weird cult thing. Uh, so that sounds super bad. Um, she, I got the ring identified. It's a ring of protection. Uh, she was also able to figure out that there actually is something in the blank book. Uh, it was some information about some adventurers uh, that killed a bunch of dragons, and then there's a, a nice little poem that goes with that. My name is Tom Riddle. <laughs> uh, Lord Eleanor is the guy. Ah, curious. Can I make a history to know if I know him since I'm a noble? Sure, <laughs> you might. Okay, how do you do the thingy on this sheet? Want to try and use this in built-in roller? You know, let's double check and see I whether or not skills uh, and then click whatever I want or yep provided that uh, you've set your proficiencies so anything that you're proficient in put a little star next to it over on the left what do you mean a star oh so, I see what you mean okay and so. that'll also be true for any of your saves I've got a few of you updated but uh Honestly, I wasn't sure whether or not today's fix was going to work for us. Fair enough. Let me see what it <laughs> says. History is a plus five, so let me just... Hey, if we history. start running, cutting in and out. What's that? We start audio work. work. Not like the hey, it worked. This is VR. <laughs> okay. So with an 18 on that, uh, yes, you, you know that uh, he is a uh, half-elf. Um, that has been around for quite some time. Um, functionally, he's best known for um, being a uh, adventurer lord within Raven's Bluff. Um, basically, within Raven's Bluff, uh, adventurers can be upgraded to what are called life lords. Um, basically, just meaning that they can um, be a lord for their lifetime, but it's not passed down to their children. Um, so, kind of go both good and bad with that. Um, as an adventurer, he was very well known for uh, tossing fireballs, basically ground zero on both him, his party, and all of the bad guys that were there, expecting that his party could just go ahead and handle it. I mean, I feel a kindred <laughs> spirit to this man. <clears throat> Look, I wouldn't almost kill you if I didn't think you guys could shrug it off. It's a cop. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, but about him, actually, um, he said that they've got, a uh, team fights coming up, and, uh, I wanted to know if you guys wanted to do this. It's really fun, and we can make money, and he's, he, he'll cover our entry fee. Sounds like fun to me. Yeah. I don't know, part of me wants to sponsor another fighter to watch you get your ass kicked. I mean, if you want to waste your money, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> have I have I done anything but waste my money? <laughs> let, let, let's let's be fair. Putting uh, putting kibble for, through finishing school, I'd say that's worth. Yeah, maybe. When the chips are down, he'll be able to serve drinks while we're dying. But we have what's it called a mascot. Like we can oh, be by awesome. the way, by the way, his butlering only extends to me. If you want him to do a, something for you during camping, it's one copper per hour. Paid to me. Okay. Just a heads up to everyone. He has a price on using him. We, we, uh -huh. we, we appreciate the, the forward notice. But, I mean, come on, guys. It's really cool. Uh, yeah. Well, it sounds like, uh, you know, whatever we found in that catacomb is bad news, so uh, getting getting our skills up probably is not a bad idea. Right? I, I support I, that. I woke up sooner this morning, so. Um, 
Sounds like Plus, a plan. When's it? Uh, until we find another job. Oh, something's really happening. To uh, punish, which I'm learning is very important in places like this. That's feedback. Yeah. Oh, wow. I know you're talking about that. Am I right? Oh, smart. Ooh. I'm going to score to settle with a guy called uh, Flynn the Fearless. If, if by chance we uh, we face him, team with him in it, uh, do not hold back. <laughs> I mean, why would I? That's fair. But... I, I have a little bit of a score to even out. I mean, it seems to me if you were a better fighter, you wouldn't have this problem. I won almost all of my bouts. I mean, almost one isn't really bragging rights. Not almost one, one almost. The order is important. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so what would you guys like to do? Let's do uh, the tournament thing. Yeah, if the tournament's coming up, I will. <laughs> I'm not going to participate because that's below me, but I'll definitely see about endorsing someone to fight. Oh, um, Navarra. Yes, sir. Uh, in your research on this Vecna guy, the cult, do you find any reference to a ship called the All-Seeing Eye? Just curious. That doesn't ring a bell, but I can look okay. for it the next time I go to the library. Yeah, no, uh, at, b between my fights, I worked for the docks, and there was just this one ship that everyone was, like, really creeped out by, and all the crew seemed a bit, uh... Thinner than they should. And I was just wondering if there was any kind of connection there because I kind of got the same creepy vibe as I've been down where all the. Yeah, uh, my question is Is there any major guild like quests to do first? Anything that needs presidents to keep the city safe? Or no? Not that you've come across as of yet. Okay. So we have a tournament coming up that obviously I'm not participating in. <laughs> and we have a but creepy. I made a vouch for you, Adrano. And we have a creepy ship that seems like it needs new ownership. Oh no! It, it left. It left. Oh. Yeah. Well, it'll, if it comes back, I'll see about maybe investing in it. Sounds okay. like a good one. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I've, if there's nothing to drag me away from the city, I, as Lord Draho, I would have zero reason to be involved with anything going on. I mean, it's money, and you can fight for the glory of your house. Uh, my house is glorious enough without peasant squabbles. Also, just to, just to, I, I'm assuming the answer is yes, but when you when you uh, had, when you commissioned to have uh, Kibble's armor made, is it also in, emblazed with uh, your house crest? Why wouldn't it be? That's what I thought. <laughs> so you're saying the cable is part of your house? Well, you've got to mark your property, otherwise people steal it. I, I mean, I mean, I've had work uniforms with the logo on them. <laughs> yeah, but they always said you were part of their family. <laughs> they had no. Or, or they called you an associate. That's the other fun word they like to use. You're an associate of the company. All right, enough better. Back to the game. Okay, so it sounds like we, we have some some tournaments to win. Yeah. All right. Um, so, so uh, Eleanor probably wants to meet you all. You know what? I'll meet him if only because he's another lord. Maybe something interesting will come of it. Okay. So you guys make your uh, way over to the uh, Hall of Wonders. Um, that's in the Temples District. And uh, the, the upper floor is basically a uh, jewelry shop. Um, very, very high-end, exquisite pieces that they, they have on show. 
um, like costing thousands, if not tens of thousands of gold. Okay. Um, when you come in, since you're being brought in by Ark, the uh, gal at the counter just kind of nods and points you over towards the doorway down. Uh, that leads you downstairs into um, about a 50-foot stairwell that takes you down. Um, once you get down there, you can see the uh, exterior of the fighting pit, um, which is a just kind of massive octagonal-shaped room. Uh, from the exterior, it's uh, fully enclosed with a kind of, uh, shall we say, one-way mirror. Um, you can see in. They can't see out. Um, but it's there to kind of keep the, the audience protected from anything that might go awry, spells or otherwise. Um, in the earliest kind of area, uh, you're able to see Eleanor standing, chatting with a couple others, and drinking some um, what looks like wine. Does he, is this seem like a serious conversation, or they just kind of come out? I'm just kind of carousing at the moment. And is he facing toward me, or am I kind of like... Am I in his peripheral view? Uh, he's he's facing away, but you can definitely tell it's him. Okay. Um, I'm going to walk into his field of view, but like let him decide if he's going to include sure. me there. Okay. Uh, so after a minute or two, the, the others that he's speaking with, um, he kind of chuckles with them, and they wander off, and he turns around and heads your direction. All right, and I'll just uh, wave everyone over here. Will you are surprisingly them? socially adept for a barbarian. <laughs> yeah. we, we do have matters. Uh, Lord Eleanor, I would like to introduce you to uh, my my group of uh, traveling companions. Uh, oh, well, greetings, you. gentlemen and lady. Are you here for the uh, bouts that I told Ark about? Oh, well, they are. Uh, Draho seems to maybe want to opt out. No, oh, disappointing, but understandable. No, no, I'm interested in sponsoring, actually. Ah, well then, um, that'll be rough. There, there's all the sponsors are fully in, unless you have another team that you wish to sponsor. Hmm. How's betting work around here? I, I, I go to. Uh, to uh, Eleanor and Whisper in his ear. What'd you say? For the whisper? I whisper? Whisper into Eleanor's ear. This is the one I told you was a bit much. Ah. I'm going to ask him how betting works. Do, what, what can I put down for a bet? Can people bet their teams? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you'll want to see the uh, bet master right over yonder, and he points at uh, a goblin that's in front of, front of a large board. Um, that just kind of has scribble marks all over it, various different team names, um, and their kind of uh, wagers up or down as far as the betting pool. Okay, I'm going to go find somebody who has a relatively strong-looking team and bet him 20 gold against his team. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, you're able to, to um, suss out uh, the, the top team, which is uh, paying basically one-to-one, that uh, that they'll win. Um, that team, uh, it's named the... Uh, uh, Names are relevant. That will be changed upon new ownership. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, so uh, how much do you want to place down? Like I said, I'm on a bet 20 gold against his team. If we win, well, we don't have to win. We just have to beat his team. Okay. That's what I'm well, betting on. We don't have to win the whole thing. At this point. Just so, his team. So, so he, uh, the, the little goblin looks up at you and he's like, do you, do you know what this is actually about? It's not team versus team. It's team versus monsters. Really? Really. Oh. Huh. So how do you determine who's the better team? Well, basically over the, the next, uh, you know, couple, three, ten days, we're going to throw all of the teams um, one at a time with uh, some time off between them. And it, it kind of works like your standard tournament. So for each pair of teams, whichever one uh, beats their stuff, moves on to the next round. Those that don't, they, they obviously don't move on to the next round. And it just keeps going until we have a uh, first, second, and third winner. 
the, the I mean, how do you determine who's the final victor if all you got to do is beat your opponents? You beat the monsters. So it just yeah, keeps going. All you going got to do is beat the and... monsters. How do you know who's the overall I, champion? Because it just keeps going until somebody's done out. I think how it works is that we're probably pit up against the same or similar monsters. And it's basically if if we don't beat it, we're eliminated. But if we do beat it, then we're still. Yeah, in that okay, case, so got the I'd right like idea. To find, I'd like to find the most competent team and just bet 20 gold against their team that we beat them. We'll rank higher than them. How about that? Oh, sure, sure. I'll uh, give you uh, 20 to 1 odds on your new team there. Clearly, I have to go speak to this lord about taking his team from him. I'm investing in one of these teams before this is done. I'm making it worth <laughs> oh, my while just, to get involved. Just so we go into this prepared, about how much time between the bat the bouts? Um, uh, basically, uh, each team has one bout every 10 day. Oh, okay. So we have plenty of time to rest. Up. Yep. So functionally, you guys would have potentially about today, and as may others, but... Uh, then that round gets tallied, people drop out, then the next 10, ten days set of rounds go on. Okay. okay, yeah, so 20 gold against that team that I placed better than them. And then I'd like to find that uh, Lord and basically bet him for his team. I want to take ownership of his team. That's all I want. Okay. Um, so I you... Go ahead. roll my eyes at this, but it's not <laughs> anything I'm surprised by, just more of like a... <laughs> hey, Draho needs to make it worth his while to get involved in this tournament. <laughs> I, I'm going to kind of look over at Eleanor with sort of this look of like, see what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and just kind of... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, if I can find the Lord that sponsors this other team, I'd like to engage him so I can give him a good deal. Sure. Um, so it'll take you a little bit, but uh, you find this uh, rather portly lord, human, um, balding on the top, but uh, full kind of horseshoe going on, a little bit older, a bit of gray coming in at the temples. Um, <laughs> so you think your team is going to win over mine? <laughs> yes, your team looks like a bunch of milk-fed babies. Oh. Well, we'll definitely see about that now, won't we? <laughs> yes, so what's the stakes here? What do you want for your team? Ah, well, do you have a team of your own to bet? No, I'm fighting in another man's sponsored team. Ah, I see. Ah, oh, well, I tell you what, if your team loses, you join my team. What, that's it? Free of charge, of course. No winnings on your part for at least uh, two tourneys. I was... Man, that's a much better deal. I was just going to give you my butler. <laughs> I've many butlers. No need before. You have a kobold butler. Oh, why would you want a kobold butler? Exotic status symbol. Clearly you're of the lower <laughs> caste of nobility, so you don't understand such things. I can understand. Sure. <laughs> So, okay, that, in exchange, you give me your team. For two tourneys, I'll fight on your team if you manage to best us. All right, we'll see how well that goes. <laughs> oh, by the way, if you're rigging the fight, I will find you in the middle of the night and slit your balls off. Oh, I have no need to do that. Okay. What twist? Already a eunuch. <laughs> <laughs> take what I don't have. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm done with all my preparations for the battle. Let's go. All right. Agreed. So, um, anything else that you guys want to do pre-battle? Uh, oh, does my kobold get to join us in the fighting? Does yeah. he get to be part of the team? If you guys want him on the team, you can have him on the team. Oh, we need him on the team, trust me. Okay. I mean, he's proven himself good in the fight. He's more useful than you'd think, so we need him on the team. I think he's very useful. Okay. So, Somebody um, needs to hold my towel between rounds. <laughs> About four hours go by, and they go ahead and call your team up. Um, they bring you out into an arena. Let's get that popped up real quick. 
Oh yeah, panel back tie. Okay, are, are you guys able to see uh, that? Uh, no. See it, question mark. Everything's gray with the question mark. Odd. Share sheet. Should be showing. No aim thing. Uh, try rolling your mouse in and out and see if it uh, is nope. just zoomed on. Zooms out on the question. Oh, wait. Yep. It's, they got closer. There's a grid, but there's no features. The heck. Uh, and I think I zoomed out just far enough that I can't. Oh, nope, there's a grid. Nope, oh, there we go. Where is it? Oh, there we go. Okay. All right. Um, the rectangles are. Uh, uh, so the, the middle portion with the rectangles that are kind of uh, slightly darker squares, those are uh, 10 foot by 5 foot thick walls. Okay. So 10 foot tall, about 40 feet long, 5 foot thick. Uh, you see some blood splatters, some ichor splatters, a uh, little mud splatter. Um, they do announce that there is a treasure pile in the middle of the arena for uh, whatever. If your team wins, that's your treasure. Um, if not, obviously the monsters are going to get it. Um, there's a set of uh, barrels to the lower left, a little fire pit to the lower right, some uh, crates in the upper right, um, a kind of hilly rock kind of entrenchment uh, upper left. The curved wall spaces there are uh, half walls. So partial cover if you guys decide to use it. And you'll be coming in at the uh, southern entrance. Okay, question. Is there a way to center this? Because like I've got half the map chopped off. Yep, so press in your middle mouse button. That'll allow you to drag the map around. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, that's nice. Um, do we know before we go in what we're fighting? Nope. All right, that's fun. Well, <laughs> um, in any case, um, Draho and uh, Navara, any, anyone who basically isn't me, or oh, and uh, since we are not going to have uh, we're not going to have uh, Russell here. I, anyone who isn't me, use the cover as much as possible. Clearly, not that I have to tell you guys that. Um, but, uh, and I'll basically move the fight where I think it needs to go. Okay. I think it's going to go. Um, but I want you guys away from whatever it is, just to keep you safe. I'm perfectly happy to stay far away from whatever it is. Next. And do you guys have a team name that you want announced? <laughs> I just had a really bad idea, but it would be... <laughs> Sounds like... What, what was the end? Lord Draho's Warriors, sponsored by Lord Alador. <laughs> <laughs> So I can make sure I get my name involved. This play of the game brought to you by Werner Letters. <laughs> um, it's a horrible name. Don't go with it. It's just no, the no, I, I, And the fact that you're admitting it's bad is... Um, actually, yeah, I look out of character, I'm admitting it's bad. In character, I think it's a brilliant idea, and you should stick with it. I, 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 look, I look down at uh, Kibble in his spider armor. Can we play something off of this? I mean... If you want to be called the Cobalt Butlers. That's I mean, look at his art. We can do something spider I, I I think that might help the crowd like us. Arachnophobia. That sounds like a metal band, and I'm all about it. It's also <laughs> the fear of spiders, so it makes it more hilarious that we have a tiny cobalt and spider. I have to share my fear with the criminal elements. <laughs> Just throwing a name out there, Arachnophobia. I'm good with a record. Will we have any objections? Sounds good. I have none. Sweet. All right. Um, uh, I also think that uh, once we get Russell in on this, uh, if, if, if Russell has a wild shape left at the end of any combat, that turns into a big old spider. 
<laughs> just that's going to be like our calls. Okay. So they place you uh, just inside the southern door, and you hear uh, the the announcements over um, what amounts to an, a magical PA system. Uh, today we have seriously that's their name. We have arachnophobia. They'll be participating in through the southern door. This consists of uh, a team of five. Ark, Lord Draho, Frostgar, Naivara. Seriously, his name is Kibble. And Kibble. Kibble, everyone. Let's give them a big round of applause as they come on out. Woo! Now, is this like the, the gate we're behind? Is it like a portcullis kind of looking thing? or A pair of large double doors. Okay, I understand. Do we open them or are they open for us? Uh, so they open for you, and you guys filter on out. As we as we come out, I'm gonna have my mall, and I'm just gonna raise it above my head. Try to get the crowd energized here with my minus one to charisma. <laughs> um, so far, the the crowd seems unimpressed. As well, they should be. <laughs> Let's fix that. Zoom in a little bit. There we go. Um, we'll be starting this bout in just under a minute. Make any preparations that your team has. So this little stone thing here, is that a wall right in front of us? It is. It's a uh, half wall. Okay. How tall is it? Like four foot? Correct. Okay. I'm going to move up to the wall, put me and Cobalt, the Cobalt behind it. I think, are we able to control our own tokens now? You should be able to, so go ahead and uh, prep where you want to be. All right. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm assuming anything that we're fighting is either coming out of the middle or to the sides, but I'm going to take point here. So uh, these, these things here, what are these? Uh, that's barrels. a uh, set of barrels. They're um, roughly about six foot tall with them kind of piled up. Okay. Oh, I, I don't want to cluster everybody back by the half wall, so I'll just come up here. I kind of wish I was proficient with uh, improvised weapons right now because I can make a very, very bad fight. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I'm. I think right here is a good place for me and Kibble because things get rocky. We can move over towards the barrels or over towards uh, okay. the other wall on the eastern side. Okay. okay. Everybody prepped where they want to be. And I, I still got them all. Because mm -hmm. I have a lot of options. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, here seems fine since there's nothing on the other side. Okay. Oh, I do want to take uh, my cantrip mold earth and I want to put an earth wall up behind me so that if something comes up behind me, it can't get an easy shot on me somehow. All right, sounds good. Any other preparations? Nope, yeah. duck behind the wall. You guess what, Booger? Enlarge. On who? Enlarge. Okay. Oh, I'm enlarged? You are now. Yeah. Oh, yeah! Um, how do I make myself bigger? Um, unfortunately, I don't believe that you do. Uh, okay, so well, just I'll, kind of take that into gonna... effect. Okay, I've got some for... for... fortunately, so... I think it's a <laughs> concentration for one minute. Yeah, but... If everything goes right, they're hitting me, not you. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's one minute, it's ten whole rounds. That's pretty good. I mean, it's not like I haven't played in a, uh, in a larger character before. You deal an extra 1d4 of damage. Yes, I do. Okay. So with that, uh, you hear kind of uh, some clicking sounds and uh, doors open. Uh, from where you're at, you can see on either side um, items coming out. There we go. And do go ahead and uh, roll initiative. Are those odd rays? Yes, they are. <laughs> oh, good. Something that can actually. Ah, oh, sweet. Uh, 16. My first decent initiative roll in this campaign. Okay. Uh, did that actually roll for me? I don't see it in. Uh, it does not look like it. Uh, if you double click on the initiative in your PC sheet, it should. Toss that roll up. Perfect. Uh, where is initiative? In oh, there it is. 
Booyah. Nice. I suppose it oh, helps if I bring up Kipple. Way to make my All right, looks like everyone's in. Um, Kibble's up first. Any directions? Uh, Kibble is going to, if he can't, let's see. I don't know the range on his short bow. If he can't shoot that thing, he is going to uh, hold his action to shoot it when it comes in range. With his bow. Okay, let me double, double check. It is 8320. So it's within range. Right. Yep, 65 to either one. Uh, which one do you want him to shoot at? Uh, let's start off with the one on the eastern side since it looks like more people are gathered around the western they'll probably engage that guy so i'll do some damage on the eastern one okay well that is gonna hit <laughs> for a whole point of damage let's see that is ogre one okay that is gonna bring us to frostgar if I use an instantaneous spell, does that break concentration? Not unless it's a concentration spell as well. Okay. Then I will... Let me double check the AC. Okay. I will uh, Snolix Snowball Swarm on okay. the one on the left. All right. That, I believe, has a DC save, I'm assuming, dex? Yep. They take 3d6 or take half if successful. Uh, so we rolled a 17. All right. So I'll roll 3d6. And you take half. So you take out five. of 10, 5, and that is over 2. All right. Anything else? No, I'll hold my, my position. That is odd. Um, while it started with Kibble, it skipped others, so Lord Draho. Okay. I am going to take my own shot at that other guy on the that Kibble shot at, and okay. I'm going to uh, entangle shot him. Sure. Or grasping shot him. So let me bring up my sheet. Inventory, of course I don't have equipment, so. Um. Do I just add a plus five plus two, so that makes it plus seven, and then I throw a d20. Mm -hmm. Did I do that right? Oh, I don't think it went. Yep, yeah, that'll hit on its face. Okay. Um, in that case, I am going to let's see, find that spell again. Make sure I got it right. I wrote it down last week, and now I can't find the notes because, of course, I can't. Are you trying to figure out what it does? Yeah, just to make sure there's no. Uh, so when it strikes a target, the creates a blah blah blah. Creature hit takes an extra 2d6 poison damage. Its speed is reduced by 10 feet. It takes 2d6 slashing damage the first time it uh, moves on each of its turns. Uh, moves for more than one foot without teleporting. Um, it can use an action to remove the brambles with a strength athletics check against your arcane shot's DC save. Uh, the brambles last for one minute or until you use this option again. Okay. So... Let me bring it up in here. So that does my D8 for a longbow, right? Yep. Yep. Plus your dex, plus 2D6. So D8 plus 2, I believe. Right. No, D8 plus 3. What am I thinking? So D8 plus 3. Oh. 
So that'd be eight damage regular. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how to roll multiple. Oh, there you go. So 2d6 poison. Seven poison. So 15 total. 15 total. Okay. Nice. And that is the end for my turn. So I go back to uh, ducking behind the wall. Okay. That'll move us to our next critter. I'd say what? <laughs> okay. That made this more interesting. And oh. it will sit there and hold action. You could say that the addition of this is shocking. Could be. <laughs> so that'll bring us to Ark. That was bad, and you should feel bad for saying it. Uh, it was, but I don't. Well, let's make this at least slightly more. Well, as I as I move forward, I'm going to yell to uh, Proskar Navara, uh, don't cluster up. <laughs> Uh, and, and, I'll, I'll, and I'll say, uh, get back, don't stay clustered. One, I will move 5, 10, 15, 20. 25. 25. I will throw one javelin at Ogre 2. Okay. Uh... Actually, before I do that, I'm going to rage, because the wording is kind of specific about the condition. <laughs> then I'll throw the jab. Okay. And a big, bellowing... <laughs> and would you prefer I use the, uh, the dice roller on the app, or can I roll my own dice? Either. Okay. Uh, it's a 12 plus 5, so that's going to be uh, 17. That will hit. All right. And since it's not a melee attack, it does not get my bonus rage damage. That is okay. Uh, that is going to be uh, five damage. And then I'll pick my maul back up and move the next five, last five feet of my movement. Okay. Did you add the d4? Oh. What's up? It's to melee attacks, or is it just strength-based attacks? I thought it was just damage. Let me well, I, I think it's based attacks, but I don't know if it's melee attacks. It just says it's target attacks with them do one four. Okay. Uh, add another four. Because your weapons also grow. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So that's another four damage. Okay. Because I'm big. Yeah. That's how we like it. Big raging. Go get him. Likes it. All right. Anything else? Uh, that is my whole action to come. All right. That'll bring us to Navara. Let's uh, uh, bolt that. So, All yeah. All right. Uh, Navara is going to, uh, let's see, step out here into this open area. Uh, she's going to cast Hex on Ogre 2. Okay. With her bonus action, uh, we'll choose... Uh, I guess strength ability checks for the disadvantage, uh, and then she will lob an arcane or an eldritch blast okay. at the ogre. I'm so the we've got in this thing. Uh, eighteen. That will hit. Uh, and then we've got. Um, uh, 12 and 6 is 18. Very nice. And from there, uh, she'll just continue running and duck behind this other wall. Nice. Using actual tactics. This feels somewhat uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see that uh, Ogre 2 is fairly bloodied at That's this mine. point. That'll bring us to Ogre One's turn. Um, he's going to attempt to move, so go ahead and roll your um, 2d6 damage draw. 
Okay. So oh, wow, he's not even gonna try and stop that. Mm, doesn't know any better. Kick too hard. So six slashing damage. Okay. Ogres no think good. Clearly. To, to be fair, I'm only thinking slightly smarter than them right now. Your brain's bigger. I, my brain's smaller. It's just got a better frontal lobe. <laughs> <laughs> Although with the enlarged. Remember, spell, he's ten brain. feet slower too. Yep. Okay. They have long strides. Okay. And he will go ahead and toss a javelin at Draho. I remember I'm ducked behind the wall, so. Yep. Fuck the cover. And he misses. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. Okay. That will move us to over two. No. <laughs> Who engages with Ark. And let's see. Do, 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 do. Does a 16 hit? Uh, barely. Okay. Because I haven't shifted. <laughs> so. Ooh, looks like 19 damage. So, 9 damage. Yep. Okay. Oh, yay, it updated. Cool. <laughs> that makes this a little easier. All right, that'll bring us back to Kibble. Direction? Uh, Kibble? Hmm. We don't really want to be grouped up now that we know there's a wormling involved. Let's see. Uh, that bridge, that's standing over water, correct? Correct. Is it deep water, do we know? Uh, you're not sure. It, it definitely doesn't look shallow from here but it's hard to tell from being so far away. Okay, well, I'm going to have Kibble dash to the middle of that bridge. Okay. So that he can continue fighting from there. Worst case scenario, he dives in the water to get away. Plot twist, it's a Stargate. Perhaps. <laughs> it looks like one. Should be able to get almost to those coins, if not there. Yep, and he can get there. Awesome, and that's it. Unless he gets a bonus action, anything to do. I can't remember Cobalt's. Uh, he will get a bonus action, which would actually get him there, so he still has a uh, action available. Oh, then fire an arrow at Ogre 1. Okay. Let's finish this guy off. And if we're lucky, he's just dumb enough to keep running between the two of us. Fire uh, Fortunately, it, it flies wide, kind of just chunks into the sand. That's perfectly fine. He did just run, so... Yep. All right, that brings us to you, Draho. He's okay. <laughs> I'm going to take a pot shot at the thing with just a regular longbow attack. Okay. Uh, I forgot to add my modifier to it, so whatever that is, plus 7. 16? That'll hit. Okay. So now that's a D8 plus 3. 10 damage. That is over 1. Okay. Any bonus or movement? And then, and then uh, is he within range to get up on top of me? Like, can he, with his 10 removed, I, I'm not sure how much space he has. Given how far he ran last time, do I feel like he could catch me if I stayed here? More than likely. Okay, then I'm going to... You can go anywhere you need. And I am going to move uh, over towards... So just make sure I'm counting right. Do I have to double move to get over this uh, wall or no? No, it's uh, a half wall, so effectively you're just able to jump over it. You just you just do a back roll. <laughs> and then I'm going to move here. Uh, should be 30 if I counted correctly. And yes. mm -hmm. that's pretty much it because that was my action. I don't think I got a bonus action. Okay. Yeah, I think number two over here thinks I'm the his priority, so you're good. Yep. Again, my goal is to just let this guy run around in circles till he dies of bleeding to death. All right, that's, that's going to bring us to the Wormling. No, not our butler! <laughs> mm -hmm. Very much so. <laughs> Don't worry, he can handle it. Can he? He can. 
Did, I don't think we've actually seen Kibble take a hit. No, because generally he stays out of combat. But don't worry, he can take this. I mean, we Trust saw him me. get punched in the face by the other dude last week. Yeah, that dude fucked him up pretty good, so. Yeah, but we, we found him. Uh, so he does dodge, so he'll take half of this. Dodging uncannily. Um, so Kibble looks almost fried by the lightning bolt that comes out of that dragon's mouth. Gotcha. That's a shame. And then it will use its remaining movement to hop behind this wall. Kibble, hide from the electricity in the water. <laughs> <laughs> That'll bring us to Ark. Uh, Ark is going to shift. Okay. Uh, and that hits me. <laughs> Damn ones on my 10 hit point rolls. <laughs> okay, so that's five. Right. Hey, give me a second. Yeah. Okay. That yeah, could be worse. That's actually nine temporary hit points in total. Okay. I do like that it scales. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, make an attack roll. Not reckless yet. Not until I'm convinced that he could hit me either way. Okay. Um, ooh, okay. That is a uh, 12 to hit on the ogre. Mm, that will hit. Yay for big, dumb piles of hit points. <laughs> I can say that because I am one. Okay. Two DS6 this time. All right. See, my damage is a bit better than my accuracy, which I... Oh, nice. That's almost max damage. All right, so that's... Don't forget you're enlarged. Oh, no, I rolled that in there, too. That's the one that made it not quite max damage. All right, so that is uh, 18 damage. All righty. It, it takes that hit, does not look happy, um, seems to be kind of stumbling. I mean, I'm raging, so I'm not exactly happy, but I'm just having fun. <laughs> this is why they're lucky I don't have a second attack. Mm -hmm. Um. So I'm just uh, going to shout, someone bring it down! And that's the turn. Okay. Proskar. All right. I'm going to ray of frost it. Okay. Uh, D20 plus five. Plus five. Uh, 13. Will hit. All right. Takes eight. It it chills, basically turns blue, and then just falls over. <laughs> I got you. That kill was stone cold. Cold. <laughs> oh, good job. Now somebody take care of that dragon thing. My. <laughs> Anything else, Booger? No. Okay. Uh, Nivara. Uh, can I see Ogre 1 from where I'm at? Mm. Or do I have to move? Let's say you'd need to get uh, basically to the, the edge of the wall, because that'll give you... Well, I shouldn't say that. Uh, from where you're at, yes, you can, uh, but it would have partial cover. If you move uh, to the edge of the wall, no cover. Okay, what about if I move, like, here? I get also no cover. Okay. So I'm going to move here. Uh, I will use my bonus action to swap the uh, Hex to Ogre 1. And we will Elders Blast. Okay. Uh, 21. Will hit. To hit. And uh, so 4 and 3 is 7. Okay. Uh, let's see. So that's five. So we'll go 
10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I don't like where that leaves me. Um, I'm just going to pop down here and hope the dragon's not paying attention. Okay. <laughs> All right, that brings us to Ogre 1. Uh, go ahead and do the 2d6 damage on it. Yeah. The funny thing I'm wondering is this is a young dragon, so I'm wondering if it's smarter than me yet. Five damage. Okay. I do love that he's not bothering to undo it. He's just coming to smash. Oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. Uh, he is able to get close enough to Naivara. I was afraid of that. Oh, with a crit. So we will take 2d8. 48. Uh, but with a pitiful 12 points. Alright. That could have run the worst. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. That, that could have killed me. And that brings us back to Kibble. Oh, how about I need to check concentration on my Hex? Ah, yeah, you do. Okay. Uh, um, he is no longer Hexed, because I got a uh, six. Yep, yep. That would drop it. Okay. Um, That's with your con modifier applied? Yeah, I rolled a four. Gotcha. Okay, uh, draw sent you a message telling you what Kibble planned to do, basically have him dive in the water. I had to send it to Discord. I don't know how to send it on this. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, da -da -da. Sounds good. Yeah. So Kibble takes a plunge. Yes. Time to cobalt to do what cobalts do. Run and hide. And then attack. You're gonna pull a Rambo, right? Yes. Come out of the water with a dagger in its mouth. Yep. Well, right now we're testing to see how long he can stay underwater. <clears throat> okay. Uh, then back to you, Draho. All right. Then I am going to. Uh, fire another arrow with this ogre and hope that I take him out. Add seven to that. It's 14. No, uh, seven 13. would be 13, but that still hits. Okay. And add three to that, so five damage. Okay. Doesn't look happy. Uh, you know what? Action surge, second attack. Okay. Let's go for it. I hope we don't have more fights after this. Or at least we get a short rest. I, I believe we get a 10 day after this. Mm -hmm. So, this is our oh, only fight. plus whatever, that should hit. That's the last one, dude. Yep. And another D8. So that's six, nine damage. Oh, so close. Um, it is stumbling, woozy, looks to be bleeding out. Yeah, I'll let the thorns finish it, so... Oops, sorry, I'm going to go here. Yep, right behind this wall. Okay. And that'll end my turn. All right. That'll bring us to the wormling. I've almost soloed that ogre. <laughs> I mean, the, the fact that it didn't bother to untangle itself helps. But yeah, yeah, you're doing real good. Agree. The breath weapon does not recharge. Good. Bring it on, you tiny little worm thing. <laughs> R remember, you have to freak out and then stab it. How's AC 15? Uh, I have a 16. All right. He bites, but uh, clamps onto just your armor. Doesn't seem to make any impact. 
I'm gonna shoo him away like a bug. Shoo, shoo, get. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he will go ahead and it. take the rest of his movement to move back. Oh, so I get an opportunity? You do. Yeah. Now, you have the bow out, so him uh, moving away would be disadvantaged because you're... I was going to in... say it's disadvantaged because it's a ranged attack, technically. Correct. Okay. I really don't remember was... the dice like that. <laughs> yeah, so let me click the disadvantage. Whoa, that's not what I meant. But it worked, I guess. Did it actually roll? Uh, it doesn't look like it. Okay, it just threw it across the battle map on accident. So. <laughs> yeah, if you uh, put it into the chat, that'll be where it rolls. Okay. So I think that's right. So did I do that right? Yep, yep. so it lowers yeah, a 15. Okay. Yep, so I should 15 plus 7, so. Yep, I we'll hit. hit. Awesome. I would hope it would. Yeah, right. Boom! Six, seven, eight, nine damage. Alrighty. That'll be the end of the Wormling. So that'll bring us to Ark. Oh, for a second, I thought you meant I killed it, and I'm like, really? <laughs> no, no, I they have some decent hit points. I'm going to scream, bring down the ogre! I'm going to move my target. You hear in the background? Okay! <laughs> um, and because this thing almost fried our mascot, I will reckless it. It does fuck. <laughs> so, yeah, worst case scenario, he gets his breath weapon back, and then it doesn't matter about advantage or disadvantage. Uh, yeah, that's true. And I would actually have advantage on uh, my saving throw against him. But anyway, that is a modified 20 to hit. We'll hit. But I'm still big. Yeah, not as good. Uh, that is 13 damage. Bludgeoning, non-magical. Plus the d4? That is with the d4. They, they, I rolled two ones and a six. All uh, right. <laughs> you smack it uh, good and hard. Its head kind of rears back and it snarls back at you. It's just at a uh, point of reference, does that seem to have hit as hard as I think it should hit? It does. Okay. Make it sure. All righty. Any bonus action? Anything else? Uh, I really don't have anything else I can do with my bonus action as as yet. So. Okay. That'll bring us to Frostgar. All right. I'm gonna ray frost the ogre in one. Okay. Can you finish two? Keep it plus so fifteen. We'll hit. Yeah. No. Ha. <laughs> Actually, he again turns blue. Takes a moment, stumbles, and drops. <laughs> Good job, kill stealer. <laughs> <laughs> Just enough is still enough. Alrighty, yeah. any bonus action, any movement? Yeah, I'll move. We, we have to give you a nickname because of this. There we go. I'll just see if you guys want to move to that half cover to the left. Huh? Oh no, I'm good where I am. I would make it right, right about there. Yeah. yeah, you can always like duck down, stand back up, and shoot, and then go prone again. Okay. Okay. That'll bring us to Nivara. Uh, Nivara will step out over here. I'm assuming she can see the dragon from there. Uh, yes, with partial cover. Uh, where does she need to go to get no cover? Uh, two more to your right. Okay, so let's see. That's going to be one, two, three, four, five. Uh, let's see if I do one, two, three, four. One, two. Yeah, so I go here. Will that work? Yep, that's perfectly in line. Okay. This is actually a pretty good formation. Uh, we will cast Hex on the dragon. Again, we'll go with Strength, and we'll Eldritch Blast. Okay. Spell slides. We are going to miss, because I rolled a 1. All right. Uh, and then uh, she'll use her last movement to duck back behind the wall. Okay. 
So that'll bring us to Kibble. Kibble pops out of the water and shoots an arrow at the dragon Rambo star. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's for pack tactics. You're welcome. Yep. That's what I wanted. I wanted to get you close enough that he could use pack tactics without getting killed. So I had him dive in the water. Okay. This is actually a decent team composition, despite the fact we don't have a healer right now. Mm. Yeah. Kibble crits. <laughs> nice. Good boy. Give us the kill. Give us the kill. Uh, let's see. He's going to get the key. Oh, it's the the bow. That's nice. Yep. Yeah. Ooh. And we'll check on his uh, bonus. Plus three. So 22. <laughs> All right. Dragon gets uh, hit in the back of the neck. It looks very stunned. Now he dives underwater again, as deep as he can go. Okay. Like lizard folk all over again, just smaller. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. That'll bring us to Draho. All right. Uh, let's see. So I can just get up next to him. So I'm going to move up next to him uh, after putting my longbow away and drawing my rapier. And I'm going to stab him real good. Okay. Because he's pretty much got cover no matter where I go, so. Oh, wait, hold up. Let me change that. I figured out how to use the modifier thing. Should roll with the modifier. 15, does that hit? Uh, it does not. So okay, it just, then. just ducks out of your way. That's fine. I'll continue standing here. Okay. Because I got no movement left. That'll bring us to the dragon, whose breath weapon does recharge. Make a choice, Biatch. Uh, Draho, go ahead and get a opportunity attack. Yeah, and it's a rapier this time, so it's an advantage. Crit, baby crit. Ooh, 19. That will hit. All right, rapier's a D8. Oops, forgot to add the modifier, so add <laughs> three to that, so six. Okay. Not Five looking plus. happy, but is still alive. And it will pop um, there. <laughs> so, uh, Ark and Draho, go ahead and get uh, dexterity saves. I have advantage because I'm always on loop danger. <laughs> uh, and my roll sucked. <laughs> yeah, that's it's okay. I mean, well, it's just a tip, anyway. Wait, I should be able to do the roll from the character sheet, right? Uh, yep. This is going to be a six. So, I'm. Okay, so that'll fail. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. I take half damage anyway, because bear, man, bear, 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 bear. Uh, that's a twenty to modify. Okay, so you'll take half damage. You'll both take half damage. You should have partial cover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, large creature. That's true. I am still large. <laughs> so total of uh thirteen, which will be the half damage. Okay, that's not bad. So so thirteen. Yep. So that uh, you've got control of that, right? Yep. So that'll be your temp hit points, hey, and then four additional, 13. <laughs> All right. Which will bring yeah. us back to Ark. Reckless, because there's no reason not to. Okay. Jesus Christ, that was terrible. Yeah, I, that misses. Okay. <laughs> Let's do threes. Do threes. My my my, my dice decided I'm not going to have the dramatic victory. <laughs> Alrighty. You know who's gonna Any take uh, movement or anything? Um, I'm, I'm standing my ground. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to move. Well, no, because Draho still gets a uh, still gets. A turn later, so I'll just like okay. draw hope back up. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to set it up to where if he tries to go after anyone but me, I get a swipe back. So. Sure. Okay, right. so yep. frost guard. Yeah. All right, gonna ray frost it. <laughs> okay. Three for three, come on. 17 hit? Uh, it does, right on the dot. That, however, does not kill it. <laughs> <laughs> now, if I use quicken spell, 
Do I get to do it twice? You do. All right, so I'll do it again. Okay. Um, Damn. That will miss. <laughs> oh. Right. Well, that's the end of my turn. Okay. That'll bring us to Navara. All right. Uh, let's see. I'm extraordinarily good at, at raising the dramatic tension. <laughs> <laughs> All right, she's going to just dash back behind these barrels and get ready to shoot at it next turn. Okay. Which will then bring us to Kibble. Okay. Kibble's got to surface enough to get air and assess the situation. Okay. Uh, how much, how far? I know the water's probably difficult terrain. If he climbed back on the bridge and moved, how far? Could he get a line of sight on the dragon? I, I mean, if it's difficult terrain, he could swim 15 over and have yeah. a good shot. He could get right there. Okay, perfect. And let him take a pot Not shot. Just at breath it. weapons work. Huh? <laughs> so we doubt just to understand how breath weapons work. Mm -mm -mm, just misses. Ah, that's okay. Does he have any movement left or no? Please tell me he does. About five feet. Okay, just step back onto the bridge and prepare to dive in the water again. Okay. I do not like that. But he's not my butt. <laughs> so that'll bring us back to Draho. Okay. I'm going to go 5, 10, 15, and stab it. Okay. We have to scream like a little girl first. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. <laughs> no, I can't fight. So I'm going to get right up on it, close my eyes, and just stab repeatedly in its direction while, sh while cowering back. All right. <laughs> if you close well, your eyes, though, you're going to be at disadvantage. Okay, I'll stab it and close my eyes before I hit. Okay. Do we disadvantage <laughs> from the last time? Yeah, I'm gonna try not to because I'm <laughs> with a sword, but seventeen. Right on the dot. Sweet. Then do. Oh, well, hold up, hold up. I can forget. I can add my three there, so I don't have to math it. Eleven damage. All right. You pierce directly into the dragon's heart. It falls still. Okay, and after I stab it a few times on the ground in panic with my eyes closed, I open my <laughs> eyes and raise my sword victoriously and confusedly. <laughs> the crowd doesn't go wild, but you, you do see a few claps and a couple cheers. Oh, please, between me and the freaking kobold Rambo, this should be roaring applause. <laughs> not quite. We they, they've seen better. <laughs> we may not be good, but we were entertaining. We're out of quickness! <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna teach my kobold, train him to frickin' performance, and he's just gonna start cat dancing in battles. You know, I'm gonna go actually uh, pick uh, Kibble up and put him on my shoulders. Okay. And by shoulders, I mean shoulder, because I don't think his legs actually can wrap around my neck. Probably not. <laughs> so. And then you start the to shrink year. while you do it. <laughs> I'm still. I mean, I I'd have enough time to pick him up and walk to the center before it wore off. Yep, so you guys get to the center. You pick up your earnings. There is... Oh, I didn't think that gold was really there. I would have had Kibble steal it while he was over there. So there are 40 copper. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, but... 17 silver. And 12 gold. Nice. How much, how much was the copper? Uh, 40. Okay. That's okay, big so uh, that's, what, ten copper, four silver with one left over, and three gold apiece? Sounds about I'm right. At, actually, as we're exiting two, I'm taking the carcass of the dragon with me. Okay. Um and did the the ogre's weapons were they just like clubs? Uh let's see. So they had uh great clubs and javelins. I'll take their javelins. Okay. So you'll get uh, two of each of those. Okay. I don't I don't need the great clubs, but it, it's just something that's kind of useful. Okay. I, since I didn't get the kill, I'm not taking trophies, but it's like, these are useful. Yeah, we'll go ahead and close out of that. 
All right. So you guys exit back through the uh, door that you were at. Um, in addition to uh, what you were prized with there, uh, there's also an additional uh, 50 gold just for winning wow. the battle. Oh, nice. We're splitting it up among uh, who got the kills, right? I mean, if you want to be technical, I pretty much soloed one of them, so... But you, but you did you only kill, yeah. which, which by the way, it, it's is it a small or medium dragon? Uh, small. It's a wormling. Okay, so it's not quite big enough to make kibble another set of armor. Not quite. Uh, okay. Could no. make something small and useful out of it. Maybe bracers. Okay. Make him a hat. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't need a hat. He's currently got spider helmet. Fade, fade spider. For more formal occasions, the, the I mean, the blue looks very good. He needs a formal it, dragon hat. And come to think of it, my colors are blue and gold. So mm -hmm. yeah, no, we can we can do something with this. Oh yeah, we bring should. the darkness. Um, so I'll actually because you're the one who got the finishing blow, I'm gonna just hold up to you. It's like, you want this now or should I uh, just hold on to it? Uh, give it to Kibble. He'll take care of it. I don't think Kibble's strong enough to carry it, but sure. Uh, did I say he was strong enough to carry it? I said give it to Kibble. He'll take care of it. <laughs> Kibble just goes... And starts trying to drag it by its neck. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually... I'm gonna put Kibble on one shoulder. I'm gonna put the dragon tight on the other shoulder, and I'll be like, Kibble, just put one hand on this. He does so. I don't care if you carry him. <laughs> I don't care how it goes. I'm just saying you asked me if I wanted it and no. I'm not touching it. I can't carry it for you. But I can carry you. That is I, I, don't, I just know why I made Sam slightly Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> this poor little guy. I mean, in all fairness, he's probably going to become the greatest cobalt to ever live, but Oh, yeah, no, it, it, yeah. if one of us, at, at some point, if one of us happens to bring in a bard, that bard is telling all the, all the tales of Kibble. <laughs> That's <laughs> funny. <laughs> um, I will, however, say that we're going to turn the, I guess, the dragon into a little set of fancy ornamentation for Kibble to wear when he's in his butler gear. But the meat is going to be dinner tonight for everyone to celebrate. Oh, okay. what, what, what if we had dragon some... meat is probably exquisitely expensive, and uh, I'm the kind of guy that would eat that. Okay, and uh, you know what? We can maybe take can maybe take his teeth and give him like little uh, barbed shoulder pieces for his armor too. Integrate it in. You can do whatever you want with the skin and the head. It's just the meat. He, Kibble's going to prepare dinner tonight. With his newfound culinary skills. Is this our first meal that Kibble's made for us? Yes. Mm -hmm. Good thing my constitution modifier just went up. <laughs> <laughs> I sent him to it's, a school to learn how to butt. So it's fairly bland. Of course it is. Can't add too much spice. That offends the delicate sensibilities of a noble's palate. <laughs> I mean, pretty much, I'm using the same logic that I used when I that was used when I worked at a private yacht club in high school. Rich people cannot handle anything above a dash of salt and a barely little bit of pepper. Oh hell no, Kerry! Keep your just little salad to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> So he's of the same mindset. He can't do spices. I mean, to be fair, I don't think he's ever encountered spices. Well, I'm sure he has, but that's okay. just not to his flavor. Well, a few what's... minor ones, but you're dealing with dragon meat, so he has no idea what to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> if he eats it, does he view it as cannibalism? No, but uh, he, he does seem fairly sad if he's forced to eat it. He's not going to be forced to eat anything he doesn't want. Okay, Besides, this is he, dragon he will generally the help doesn't eat the good food. <laughs> I 
love how he's like super depressed, but like still out helping out here. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I sent him to school and he gets a paycheck and all he has mm -hmm. to do is pass that, hand me wine until I pass out. But at some point during dinner, um, I'm going to lean over to uh, one's like, just make him happy and I'll, I'll, I'll get you something. Okay. 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 Get okay. my make happy. Don't talk to the help, or you're paying for his time. <laughs> I throw a copper piece at you. You did good today. Excellent. Have that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've actually got a place to put it now. Oh, I've got a place you can put all your gold. <laughs> oh, do you have another? Do you have an investment opportunity for me? Yeah, what property in Arizona? Uh, so, what would you guys like to do now? You didn't take that. Did you take that copper piece out of my uh, inventory? Uh, I haven't yet, but I've got it noted, so I'll handle that post game. We should go find out if the other team won. I was gonna say I need to go check on my bet and see if we did better than the other team. I was gonna say, I was gonna say, um, did they go before, simultaneously, or after? Well, uh, there's only one arena, and they generally leave it for a couple hours to clean up and remove carcasses. So we get to watch the other I mean, one of theirs. I mean, to be fair, not necessarily. You uh, since you guys are doing dinner, it would happen over your dinner spot. Eh, Do that's we, fine. Are we able? I mean, are we able to watch this with a view? Uh, no. Not with you doing dinner. What? Not with you doing dinner. You mean we can't get a box seat with catering? <laughs> Not at the moment. <laughs> Maybe on the next time. Um, if you had brought it up beforehand, probably. We'll, but you we'll opted just for dinner first. We'll just do something that Lord Draho would do. Say that watching our uh, watching our opposition was beneath us. <laughs> I mean, really, I don't care what they do. I know I'm better, and we're better as a team. So I'm going to, after they're done with their fight, check and see if I made any gold or if I just lost 20 gold. Uh, not as of yet. So the the particular bet that you put in um, would last through the full tournament. Oh. Oh, yeah, I did word it that way. I didn't know if they would take it that way or they'd just go the first one. Yep. Okay, good. Then uh, I'm going to throw another copper piece of draw hoe. Hey, Kimball, you yeah. ever had alcohol? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Did you like it? Mm -hmm. What kind did you have? It was kind of brownish. Okay. So, so, so you fuzzy. liked it. You, you liked it enough to keep drinking. It was okay. You like? You know if you like sweet things? Maybe. Okay. I, I assume we're like back at whatever inn we've been staying at. Yeah, I believe the, uh, sort of like I don't feed him or treat him well. I'm just opening him up to new experiences. I paid for my hour. <laughs> That's fair. That is very fair. <laughs> okay, well, much I, I, much like a work. prostitute, it's not really my business what you do with your hour with him. As long as you paid. Also, the dude tanked a breath weapon solo and nearly died for us. <laughs> nah, he ah. was fine. He would have never died. He would have never died. Said but just bring him back anyways. Well, I, I assume that if we're in a place where he can cook dragon, then we got a place for their food. So I'm going to see if they have any mead. Oh, absolutely. So um, Titus, the bartender, is more than willing to bring that out. There you go, gents. Yeah. Okay. Was it a whole bottle or did you just pour two? Uh, a whole bottle and uh, five glasses. How much? Silver. I put down a gold. Well, I'll keep this coming. <laughs> and for the wine, I'll just put down one gold, leaving me with exactly two gold left to my name. Okay. And just tell him to keep the good stuff coming until I can't walk out of here. Out, out of character. Do you feel upstaged? <laughs> yes that is exactly what it is see this is what I do with my time I didn't spend money on me <laughs> so I, I just bring uh, I bring the bottle over 
I pour one for me, and that the next one's for Kibble. I pour them a little and just kind of like try that. Tell me how you like it. Anyone else? Oh yeah. He, or one out. Someone who wants one. He picks up the goblet. And... <laughs> that is really good. You know what that's made from? Mm -mm. Honey. <gasps> right? Where do you get that? Bees. That's yeah. just weird. I was really hoping you were going to tell him it was made out of cobalt to fuck with him. <laughs> Not you. <laughs> uh, it's made from bees. Yeah, they, they gather pollen and they change it. They gather the honey. So, yeah. I'm glad you liked it. Just <laughs> tell me if you start feeling a little funny, okay? You are kind of small. Okay. okay. So this can start affecting you pretty fast. And make sure <laughs> that you keep eating, keep, keep, keep eating some meat, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. And so uh, with, with the wine, Titus will also bring out uh, mutton. Brings out what? Mutton. Oh, oh good, good. Good old-fashioned mutton. I'm just eating dragon meat with wine, cheese, and that's it. Okay. I'm have your pinky extended the entire time? <laughs> what? No, why would you extend your pinky? Do you have your <laughs> nose lift up in the air, too? Well, of course. If I keep it down, then it gets all the bad smells of you peasants. The question <laughs> is, is that more the elf part of you or the noble part of you? Is there yes. a difference? <laughs> that is fair. Um, we bring out the mutton. I'm like, have you had mutton before, Kibble? Mm -hmm. All right. Do you like it? Mm -hmm. All right. Eat up. And he he tries to sit down, but the table's too high when he's sitting, so he's standing on the seat. Small crate. Is he at our table or is he at his own table? Uh, kind of like a, a little side table so that he's not eating with the lords. <laughs> Well, because if he's within our view, he should be using the proper dining instructions he was taught. So yeah. I'm going to scold him and tell him fork, knife, manners. Sorry. Hey, get the stick out of your ass, Draho. <laughs> Look, if I have to send him back, I will. So did, did someone fetch us a uh, booster seat? Yep. Yay. Titus comes back, has a small little crate for him. <laughs> Sets you know it on the worse? seat and puts him on top. As a player, I really do feel shitty for treating him this way. <laughs> but I just know Draho's not does not care about that. That is his exotic servant. <laughs> it's okay. You're the bad cop, I'm the good cop. But that, that is the dynamic we have here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just being a dick to this poor cold old <laughs> And uh, likewise, aside from uh, Titus being there, um, Eno is also sitting as, at his normal table. Who? The uh, bar owner. Oh. Thanks. Okay. That's not important to me. The help's only important if my wine glass runs empty. Mm, 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 it's me and them. <laughs> uh, I'm actually um, stand up for a second with my meat and my mug here. Gentlemen and lady, to our victory. Victory. Put, uh, put my mug in. I'm actually, will... make, actually making a point to reach over and make sure that uh, that uh, Kibble can clink my glass too. He lifts his up. <laughs> I am not going to reach my glass out, but I'm going to tilt it above my head and nod politely and then take a drink. Because I don't want you, I don't want you to tent. break my wine glass with your unreasonable brutish strength. <laughs> That's why my mug's cuter. <laughs> it's like the medieval times.
Alrighty. So at this point, um, go ahead and roll me a perception check, everyone. Perception. Someone's after our monies. <laughs> Good luck getting anything out of me. Twenty-three. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any money. Too busy stuff in my face. Nineteen. Yeah. I have my special barbarian Troll paranoia. All right. So everyone other than Frostgar notices this tiny little hand with an eye sitting on top crawl into the bar. A hand with an eye on it? Does it seem to be physical mm -hmm. or magical? It's physical? Yep. Uh, and the, the eye, is the eye physical or is it like a tattoo? Uh, it's physical. Which hand is it? Is it a left hand or a right hand? Looks like a right hand. <laughs> Good <laughs> question, knowing what you know. That um, would add a whole new level of creepy to these cultists. I'm going to... What was the name of the barkeep again? Uh, Titus. I'm going to look at Titus. Titus, is that normal? Generally only if uh, somebody's here for some adventures. Why? It's literally the hand of the Adventurer's Guild. You don't see it out very often these days. Oh. Does it actually go exactly where it needs to, or can I go pick it up? Yeah, you pick it up if you want to. Normally it has a message. Okay, I'm going uh, to go pick it up. Okay. These are a message for me. It, it kind of tucks two fingers under and then brings, a, brings out this tiny little slip. And then the girl goes... <laughs> <laughs> so I'll pull that out uh, I'll go take it from our and, and I'm going to assume he I probably really can't read it well whether can you can read or not we're all assuming you can that's fair um, someone <laughs> could probably read this more eloquently out loud than me okay so um, it reads dear adventurers we've heard of your recent success and have a potential job offer for you if you would like to inquire, please come to the Adventurer's Guild in the Temple District. Signed, Mithra Kalin. Okay. What time of day is it? When did we finish the tournament, all that stuff like? Um, Post-dinner, so it's uh, about 8 p.m. So it's probably too late to head to the Guild now. I say we take our, our rest for the night and then head over in the morning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds like a plan. I'm going with that. Seems, now, seems likewise, reasonable. if you go into your character, how is that set? All I have to do is erase the 13 damage. Yeah, um, just delete your wounds. Uh, in fact, I can go ahead and do that from the combat tracker. Oh, nice. Yeah, Quick, easy done. <laughs> we did it. Yeah, anyone with missing spell slots needs to get them back. Mm -hmm. I've, got all, I've got all my spell slots back. Yeah. And I get both my arcane shots back, even though I only used one. I mean, to be fair, that one arcane shot what counted for a lot. Well, I didn't want to use the second one until I saw whether there was a surprise fourth enemy after the dragon showed up. Because I felt like the kind of thing that would happen would be something else would jump us from the far end of the arena that we couldn't spot because of its stealth. I'm just thinking that at some future fight, something's going to come out of the water. <laughs> it's a good thing that didn't happen this time, or we'd be short one butler. <laughs> right? I mean, our one butler would be short, though. So short one, short butler. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so yeah, long rest, and then I guess we'll head over in the morning and see what the guild has for us. Okay. We got ten days till we could fight again in the arena. Yep. Um I I will say that Ark has noticed that he his way of dressing is uh vastly different from everyone around him. Mm -hmm. like he's oh. basically wearing like are you interested in obtaining some new clothing? 
I'm saying he noticed it. I didn't say he said anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he says anything, I will happily introduce him to my tailor where I get a nice discount. He's welcome to. But, but he, with a sigh, he does go over to draw and go, you, you said you started a business where they make clothes? Yes. Custom fitted designer fine clothing. We need outfits. We do. I I would like something that looks a little bit more close to what the nice people's clothes look like. I'm I, basically I'm just wearing like deer skin sewn together. So I definitely stand out aside from the fact that I'm you know uh, not quite six foot very wide bear. So but if people want some nice clothes, I'm gonna, before we head to the guild, I'll have them come with me to the clother to get measured and basically get really fine, like high quality clothes, but looking like commoner clothes. Okay. You know, since they don't want to look as pompous as I do, it's just of a finely made common looking clothes. I'd like to explore my options. I just... Oh, I was just saying if you didn't want to look like me, but yeah, whatever you want. I don't, uh, but doesn't mean I don't want to look nice. And um, so you guys are aware, you'll have to pay for it. I can't pay for it. Sorry. That's okay. I can. Yeah, same. And uh, one sec here. So I got, it just returns it to the party anyway. So Whatever the cost <laughs> of a fine clothing is, I'm assuming, it's I get a 10% discount on it. So you're welcome to uh, give me the gold and then I pay, basically, because it's my discount. Uh, uh, so what I what I what I'm hearing is that you want to make it look to your employee that you're treating us. Well, he's not my employee, but I'm a part owner in the business, so I have to make it look like I'm the money. Oh, yes, you both appearances. Yeah. So Can you make fine tailored robes. I mean, whatever they cost, take ten percent off the price and give me that much gold, <laughs> or copper, silver, whatever it costs for fine clothes. And then I'll commission it all. So the, the fine clothes is 15 gold. So that's uh, what a uh, um, one 13 gold. 13.5 silver. Or 13 gold, 5 silver. Okay. If you're taking 15% off. No. Yep, sure. 10. 10. I thought I got 10 off. Right. Yeah, but it's, it's 15 gold. So then 10% off would make it 13 and a half. Is that Sorry. 12.75. Gold specifically. <laughs> Math. <laughs> yeah, here's the gold. Calculus. I would like fine tailed robes. Right. I'd, I'd like one of those fancy outfits too. Uh, no sleeves though, for obvious reasons. Go off the gun shell. Basically, I, I'm going to describe to him what basically looks like a uh, sort of a um, right, half Viking tunic. But like down to my knees. Okay. Actually, down, down half shit. Um, in like a, we get like a forest green. Totally doable. I would like mine in light blue. I do like a a nutwork embroidery along the the collar and the front. Okay. Thank you. So the, the clothier tells you it'll take about two days to get all that done. Um, takes only half the commission up front, the other half to be paid uh, at the time. Um, the oh, clothier that's... itself is the uh, Lion's Head Weavers. Also, I'm going to leave a small note with them after they leave saying, make sure um, on the interior of it, there's a little tag that has my insignia and our clothes shop's name on it. Oh, of course, my lord. Thank you. I want the crest on the back of mine. Oh, you want my crest? Yeah. You're officially joining my house? <laughs> no, but I'll represent it. Oh, nice. And I was just putting it, I was literally clothes. putting a tag inside the clothes. <laughs> I've created the first branding tag. <laughs> It'll be a nice logo on the outfit. Yeah, if you, if you want that, that's your choice. I just wanted everyone to have a little obnoxious tag right at the back of their neck inside the clothes. In, in <laughs> a, you just have like a, uh, you'll just have like a crier in every town holding up a, a minor illusion rock that just, you know, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
slowly change my symbol from two crossed blue roses to a Nike swoosh with a blue rose. <laughs> oh, hey, actually, if we do, if we keep doing well in the tournament, we might have to like sell like you know little spider masks or something. <laughs> That's great. So yeah, get our clothes and then head to the guild. All right. So getting to the guild, um, once you're there, it's a, a fairly kind of standardized structure with all the buildings around it. It just has the uh, crest of the Raven's Bluff Adventuring Guild um, attached in front. Um, heading inside, um, as you're opening the door, you hear, <laughs> oh, this is going to be wonderful. <laughs> and... You open the door, get inside. You don't see anyone in there. The The room is um, basically empty, save for kind of a, a front desk and two side doors. Uh, perception check. Go for it. Uh, Thirteen plus five. Okay. Uh, so you can tell that uh, that that voice was coming from the door to the right. That's not creepy at all. Uh, I'm going to just take my... my it, does it open in or out? Uh, opens in, uh, but is open. Okay. Hello? Oh, uh, um, just a sec. <laughs> I'll be right out. <laughs> I just kind of like look at everybody else with like a what the hell is going on express hey, nervously going I've heard to place weirder things in the middle of the night this is normal i'm gonna put my hand casually on my rapier so it looks like i'm just resting my hand on my rapier but i'm definitely prepared to start stabbing wildly <laughs> okay <laughs> So uh, a good 30 seconds goes by and then this uh, very short kind of hunched um, thin like frail kind of looking figure uh, comes walking out he's probably about four foot five looks to be human um, rather old and just comes hop kind of hobbling out <laughs> hello um, oh, did did you receive the hand Yes, we did. Are you the one that sent it? I am. <laughs> I'm. I'm Mithra Kalin. I. I'm the. Uh, shall we say recruiter for the Adventurers Guild here in town at the moment? <laughs> How are you all today? I'm fine. Are, are you okay? Oh, very good. Very good. Yes. Uh, just dealing with some experimentations. Um, n nothing to worry yourselves about. My hand just kind of on its own starts to glide toward one of my hand axes, but doesn't actually grab it. <laughs> How'd you get that hand to do that trick of yours? Oh, well, you see, I, I'm one of the <laughs> few um, legal necromancers here in town. I actually grip it this time. <laughs> don't, don't worry. Nothing bad. Nothing bad. I promise. It, it, oh, I wouldn't be okay. legal if I did anything wrong. Insight check. Go for it. Would you this guy's fine. That's the total, <laughs> not, the, not the number on the die. Okay. What was that, uh, Froskar? Would you be able to teach me a thing or two about your magic? Oh, possibly. Uh, provided you join the guild and are capable of performing services for us. <laughs> what direction? Direction. He was a freak. Yep. I've got a wisdom based on intelligence. See, seems fairly honest. I let go, but I kind of keep my eye on him because he is just a beast. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the, since you received the hand, it, it found you and, and knows that you're the group that uh, was recently out um, doing adventuring. Isn't that isn't that true? <laughs> yeah, we uh, killed quite a few kobolds, although uh, we like this one, so he's sticking around. Yeah. wonderful wonderful um so we we have a contract it's the first in quite a long while uh, we don't get many requests these days and it, it's good to see that um new adventurers are in town <laughs> um we we have a request from lady liara uh of the the house of uh, 
oh, oh gosh, what was it? And he, he kind of goes over to the desk and just starts rifling through it. Oh, yes, Lady Liara de Villers, um, one, one of the most noble houses in town. You may have heard of them. Um, she she uh, seems to have been having some trouble with one of her, her mines, a silver mine. Yes, yes, a silver mine. Not far, um, maybe a day's travel uh, e eastward from the, the fire weather river to the to the earthfast mountains um her her workers uh have ex been experiencing some trouble um possibly cobalts possibly bandits and and need that to stop <laughs> do, do you think he can handle that what's the payoff well that that would depend on what it is if you find that it's uh Cobalts. The the kind of standard payout for cobalts is uh, one one gold per uh, cobalt itself. Um, obviously, they don't have ears, so that would be rather awkward to to ask for those. Um, if it's bandits, we we accept hands. I just kind of gently put my hand on uh, which side hand? Reach for kibble, probably his head. He he kind of ducks in behind you. I just 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 tell him to let Kibble know that it, it's a because I know the talk about potentially killing more Kibble is going to be very uncomfortable. A little bit. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. What hand does he want from bandits? Doesn't matter. Either one will do. Pairs uh, don't count. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> I was just about to say, are you going to be matching hands up? <laughs> Let's be consistent. Out of character, I will totally jack up a couple of hands with a knife afterward to make him believe that it's two different people when it's the same guy. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> you can try it, least. Worst case scenario, he calls me on my bullshit and laughs about it. He seems halfway insane. Yeah, he seems like he appreciated a good joke. <laughs> and a bad one. Especially a bad one. So, what do you say? Are you it? Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. And he pulls out a map and uh, puts it down on the table. Uh, so the Earthfast Mountains are, are just to the east of here. And he marks a location where um, the mine is supposed to be at. You'll, you'll want to start there and then find out whether the bandits are in the mine or if they're cobalts um, or track them down to wherever their, their base is at. <sighs> yes. <laughs> Would it be possible to speak to this Lady Liara for more information? Or would she be the type who doesn't meet with us personally? Not, not generally. She's normally very busy. It's it's why she contracts through the Adventurers Guild. Makes sense. Right. He said this was about, the mine was about how far away? Uh, about a day's travel east towards uh, the Earthfast Mountains. Oh, uh, we can do this in between our bouts, right? Yeah. yeah. We should be able to complete this in 10 days. And hey, maybe we'll come back with uh, some new fancy stuff to, to do. Or to work with. So. Oh, yeah. that would be wonderful. Likewise, um, Le Lady Liara has uh, posted a bonus. Um, supposedly some form of magical item, but, but she didn't say specifically which. But uh, whoever is able to complete this will be able to meet with her and claim that bonus. <laughs> oh, okay. I like the way this sounds. Yeah, nothing shady about it at all. Oh, of course not. It's it's bright outside today. It's very bright. Yeah, I'm definitely scamming the tans. <laughs> what? Now, do you want to sell this man some nice, fine clothing while we're here? What? No, I'm not a salesman. <laughs> <laughs> you know where to... You know, I sort of brush at my clothes very extravagantly. Good quality sells itself. Uh, you should probably tell your guy that we're not going to, we might not be back until after it's finished, like a day or two. Oh no, I commissioned it. It'll stay on the rack until I get back. Gotcha. Um, do we want to take anything with us? I mean, we still have, what, three carts? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, and, we should bring quite a buttload of equipment. Yeah, we still have all those weapons that we could sell just to get rid of, because we're not using them. Probably should. Yeah. Maybe get, the, maybe get the corpse cart a little cleaned out. 
<laughs> I just assumed yeah, someone was doing all of that, that stuff during the 30 days. You know, you know, it was probably one of the first things you had uh, um, Gibble do while we were here. No, I put him straight into school. Mm-hmm. We could pretty sell much the whole time he's been in school. Uh, we would have also put the horses in stables too. Uh, do we have to account for that? Um, I consider it just kind of uh, part of your normal rent and upkeep. Okay. Okay. Great. I was gonna say, if not, we'll sell the weapons but, and use that for stables and horses. My, one day, uh, my, my one week of. Uh, of uh, look of a uh, good lifestyle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I'm real good. So we have three carts and technically, I guess, three horses to drag three different carts, right? Correct. How many carts do we need to comfortably move the whole party plus our supplies? To find comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> like, just curious, because if we don't need all three carts, probably be a good idea to lighten our load and the number of horses we got. I'd say two at most. I feel like one cart for us and one for our supplies. Because there's what? Six of us if you include Kibble? I mean when the full party? Uh, Seven if you include Kibble. Mm -hmm. Okay, seven people. Well, Kibble doesn't take up much space. Right. Plus he can always walk. So do you think seven people would fit comfortably on one of these carts? Is this like a regular covered wagon type cart, or is this like a tiny market cart? No, it was, they were uncovered. Yep, uncovered, but full wagon size. Okay, well... I mean, you're going to have two drivers, so... Mm-hmm. How I mean, much does it cost to tarp both of those carts? If we sold the third cart in the horse, could we tarp, uh, cover the other two carts, and provision them? Sure. Excellent. And I say we just stick with two carts and put a covering on them so we can yeah, get some proper rest. Sure. Seems reasonable. Yeah. And we'll have had that done in the, the the time we were doing our downtime, so. Sounds good. Yeah. So I'll move us down to two draft horses and two carts. But now they're covered. And, you know, any, any minor repairs that were needed or things that we could use, just keep the carts in good running shape. Yep. And if we got time, paint them royal blue and put my insignia on the side of them. Absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> now, do you guys want to get rid of the bulk weaponry and whatnot that you found? Yeah, we yeah, can as well. that. Like, if anyone who wanted to claim it has a chance to claim it. Although, I'll, I'll look at Kibble and be like, is there one thing you want? Although I don't think anything's going to be better than that short sword we gave you. Yeah. 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 The short sword oh. we gave you. No, yeah. they, we, we gave him a good short sword, and he mm-hmm. has freaking face, fade spider armor, and bow with Although, matching arrows. Daggers for throwing might not be terrible. Mm, no, no. I, I have two daggers that I'm never going to use. I can, I can give him one. Yeah, and you guys currently have 35 daggers. Still not enough. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you, do you want to just put a let's stash just, of that? Sell them. Let's just sell I them. do think we should keep a couple weapons in the each cart just for emergencies. Should something happen where we wind up losing weapons? So we like a couple of the smaller ones like under the seat? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like, something like that. Do the Mad Max style machete under the car thing? Or, I mean, we got the money with what we make off the sales, we could invest in a couple of storage boxes for the carts. Yeah, we, we could, I mean, we could have those constructed, installed, and secured. Yeah, and uh, you know, we can put some cushions on them so they can be double as bench seats. Utility, I like it. Because I'm not sitting on something that's not cushioned. Right. <laughs> um, and bear in mind, all the modifications we're making, I will try to get my insignia and my clan colors of royal blue with gold trim on all of it unless you stop. I, I'm going to literally go to every single work person that he tries to convince this of and tell them not to. <laughs> she has the higher charisma, so she'll succeed. Okay. At this point, it's like, the guy's, the guy's good enough in a fight that I, I'll just put up with this. And just no, like, I, I, I'm literally not driving. I like the colors, so. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not taking a stance either way on this. I'm just rolling the guys. 
And I went ahead and dropped um, a copy of the complete list of equipment from your first adventure into Discord for you. So anything you guys want to get rid of, you can. Um, we'll go ahead and take care of that in, uh, between games. Okay, I was going to say, why do we have... Did we ever sell the Citrine and Moonstone? Was that part of our initial gold? Uh, no, you have not. Well, um, those probably good. want to sell. Yeah. Well, we can deal with that after the game. Yeah, mm -hmm. we'll deal with that between... Pretty much, like I said, I just want to modify the cards with put a cover on them, put some storage boxes in there with cushions to turn them into benches, and the one that we're going to travel in, and the other one I just want to put in some storage boxes and barrels and things to store food and, and get wine. The, uh, get the broken uh, reins and uh, bit and everything replaced. Yeah. So, you know, make it look good. Mm -hmm. Make yeah. them functional. Okay. And blue. So I assume it's morning now? Yep. Yeah. I mean, if we can't do the insignia, can we at least get royal blue with gold trim? Blue's going to be expensive. That That's my knowledge, not, not our knowledge. Uh, the price doesn't matter. Look at what we're selling. Who's got the money for this? I, I'm, I'm not going to fight you on the color. I'm just, I, I draw the line at the insignia. <laughs> <laughs> If you didn't, I would be upset with you. <laughs> I will say uh, one request I'd like for modification, at least on the cart that I drive. I'd like there to be a uh, a little tube, I would say, a little basket thing up front in which I could put a couple of javelins just to happen like right there by uh, by my uh, control seat. Ryan javelin. It's like Ryan shotgun. I say assume we'll have those for the next time because we probably don't have time for that now. Yeah. If we want to head out. Yeah. I mean, I mean, again, this is stuff that we had modified during the time that we were taking our down. Yeah, I didn't even think about the cards during downtime, or I would have said that I definitely wanted to get them modified and fixed up. So. Yeah. And I wasn't in town, so I wouldn't be able to even question anything. So. That's okay. Your your work was very important. <laughs> yes so okay on to the mines let's get traveling okay so you guys um take the time um takes about a day to get out there now uh, with it being morning it will be roughly 8 p.m by the time you get to the mines themselves okay all right so uh when when we get there uh do we spot any of the actual miners uh you do not do I spot any of what's left of them? Um, give me a uh, investigation check. Investigation. I'm gonna help him with that. I'm pretty sure I can perceive a body. <clears throat> Do I have that skill? Um, no. Yeah. Uh, you have advantage yeah. since Navarro is helping. Is that oh. with your advantage? Oh, with advantage. Mm -hmm. Eleven. Oh, that's a little better. Um, takes you a while, but uh, you are able to find blood stains. Wet or dry? Oh, uh, fairly dry at this point. Okay. Um, can I check for uh, tracks? Tracks? Sure. Give me a survival check. That I'm actually decent at. The... 12. Okay. Um, likewise, still takes you a little while. There are uh, some heading into the mine, some heading out of the mine, and some heading a bit uh, to the northwest. Do they all seem human sex? They do. Okay. Well, Might as well start in the mine. Yeah, it is a call. So, heading into the mine? Yeah, I'll follow yeah. the party. Okay. I'll be first. I'll be in the back. The uh, mine goes in for about uh, 20, 30 feet, and then just ends in a complete encasement. Um, looks like something has uh, destroyed in that set of walling. Just caved it in? Mm-hmm. Didn't someone say they had Mulder? I do. <laughs> do you want to mold it back to normal? Yeah, if I can. I throw uh, a cop. 
Well, while, I'm pretty while, sure the limit on that is it has to be loose dirt or sand. Can't be something like solid rock. Yep, and, and that limit. would be the the trouble with the mine since you're actually in the mountains. You're able to do a little bit, but most of it tends to be uh, the mountainous rock. All right. Well, the book I can't do I will do the old fashioned way. Okay. And while okay. I'm doing that, and before I get that done, I'm going to throw a copper at uh, Lord Draho without warning. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, Kibble. I'm going to roll to see if my greediness will catch it in midair, even if I'm unaware. Uh, so that's, is this like an opposed check then? No, this is just me determining if I'm actually greedy enough to roll this, because player well, character, I would I'm catch doing... it no matter where you threw it, but I'm curious if I'm actually confident enough to do that. First of all, I'm doing this without warning you, so it's, and I'm trying to like hit you in the face, so it's kind of an attack. I mean, okay. I'll I'll roll it as a deck save and see if I catch it with disadvantage. Go for it. Whoop, I accidentally made that three. <laughs> Elven inaccuracy. Well, looks like it only accepted two of them, right? Looks like it. Yeah, so that's a one. <laughs> one. It plops so square in your forehead. <laughs> As you as you feel the smack, so kibbles. This seemed like something your people would do. In mm -hmm. a, uh, okay, I we, feel a little better about this job then. We know has boomsticks. I'll start helping him out. Okay. This is fantastic. I say, I just I'll, gave him copper every time kibble was used to. <laughs> I, I, I will try to help, but I only have an eight strength, so. I've still got fifty. I'm fine. I've still got fifty nine minutes thirty seconds. <laughs> and I'm gonna change this to uh, copper every half hour. <laughs> this so, is nothing like it was at home. You, <laughs> you start tunneling, and the further you get, it just continues to just be that rocked rubble. Does it seem to be just? Do I, do I even like smell like a change in the air or anything? No. Okay, I, I'm gonna look at kibble. Like as I'm continuing to dig, kibble. What, what's a boomstick? Is it's the the human sticks that, that go boom. Does anyone know what he's talking about? Dinamite. It's exotic. You wouldn't understand. <laughs> Did you say meat? Dinamite, they call it. Okay. He means dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> My, I certainly do not. So it, like, explodes? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I kind of I kind of look back at everyone else. I'm like, you civilized folk come up with the. You guys are clever. Um. Anyway, that looks like that's kind of not ending anytime soon. So. Mm -hmm. I don't follow the other set of tracks. Then I don't. Know. Yeah. Is there anything on wanna, the wall? If, if you don't want to keep working, I guess we can go the other way. Okay. So um. So what time of day is it? Like right now, as we arrive. Uh, so you got there at about 8 p.m. Um, after digging 15, 20 feet, uh, probably 10, 11-ish. Well, there's only one way in or out of here. Um, although, looking at this, maybe not the best place to stand. And does anyone see any more of this dynamite stuff lying around? Uh, no, but if I see any well, dynamite, I, I am definitely no idea what I'm so I rolled a 20 for investigation. No, nice. so any dynamite. The, no dynamite, but you do notice the um, uh, explosive, like, burn scarring off a, a bunch of the rocks. Okay, so there, there's no active dynamite, but it was definitely used here. All right, well, whatever this stuff is, I don't know if these guys still have some, so maybe being in the cave, not the best idea. I mean... If we go to the mouth of the mine, at least they still have to come through there to get to us. What? But I, I think at this this time, at, at this point, we should probably be setting up camp. Oh, yeah, I guess it would be a full day of travel. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's 10 at night. Or, you know, yeah. dark 30 and a half. So. <laughs> so first light, head back into the cave? Yeah, I'll, I'll take first watch. Kibble will take first watch with you. He still has some good company. Yep, and he uh, does not have to be paid for it because this is part of him working for me. 
Cool. Uh, so you don't have to. will go second. I'll go third. Hope there's only three watches in a night, because I'm not taking one. Alrighty. Um, Ark, go ahead and give me a uh, perception check. Yeah. Ooh, that's a 13. Okay. That might be good enough. Yep, your guys' uh, watch, you and Kibble, are able to maintain staying awake. Um, also, nothing seems to happen. At some point during our watch, I'm going to say to Kibble, I know this is awkward for you, but for what it's worth, um, I'm sorry that we don't all your... It's okay. They, they were bad people. Okay. Good. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Very bad. Killed lots of people. Oh. Told <laughs> By the time this is done, he's going to be a freaking Hannibal Lecter. So. <laughs> <laughs> you pulled it all? You know you're reptilian. Nope. Have armor. Keeps you warm enough? Mm -hmm. All right. And so as we switch off, I just, you know, bring him back. And uh, I let, wherever he decides to sleep, I, I kind of like clean up against the cave all the next week. Okay. I sleep, I sleep like that. Man, it's like I got two servants for the cost of one. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I can pick up, uh, what was it, Navarro was next? Yep. Okay, so I wake up Navarro when ours is done. All right, Navarra, give me a uh, perception check. All right, uh, Navarra gets a uh, 16. 16? You're able to stay up through watch. Nothing of uh, eventful happens. All right, and then I guess I will wake up Froskar. All right. All right. During my shift, I'll put on my helmet. Okay. So I can see in the dark. Smart. I see everything. <laughs> <laughs> Roll that uh, beautiful perception check. Good. All right. With a six, Frostgar nods off at some point during his uh, shift. But uh, Lord Draho, go ahead and give me a perception check as well. Because you've been dead meditating for a while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I love that I only need four hours of light rest, and I still refuse to take a watch. <laughs> Roll to care. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was it I needed to roll? Uh, perception. Perception. So. Since he's not actively looking, wouldn't it be as passive? <laughs> 14. 14 will do. You, you notice Froskar kind of at the, the entrance of your camp napping. Okay, I'm going to get up and approach him real quiet-like. And then I am going to... Uh, hmm, what can I do to really fuck with him and teach him a lesson? Dye my clothes blue and give me an insignia? <laughs> no, 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 that's a reward. This is a punishment. He's also got people for that. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm going to take his boots off. Okay, I'll roll a stealth check. Now it's by the hand. Friendly no, you got to be stealthy to do it. Yeah, sleight of hand comes after I determine if I can, Yep. <laughs> if I don't wake you up. Because uh, what kind of armor are you wearing? Chainmail. So at disadvantage. <laughs> Chainmail? <laughs> Really? Yep. It's considered it heavy on. armor. I mean, oh. you could have scale mail and be just as good right now. Mm -hmm. You still have disadvantage, though, so it wouldn't really so, adjust. Oh, let me. Sorry, I forgot to make that disadvantage. Let me roll another one. Okay. I doubt I'll do better than that, but. Nope. <laughs> I did less. So you start sneaking over and clink, clink, clink. Frostgar, <laughs> Frostgar go ahead and roll perception. I was going to say, do we all hear this? <laughs> uh, potentially. Everyone can roll perception if they want. Barbarian paranoia, go. 14. 
Twelve. Okay. So put up your sleep. So, do, I, do I disadvantage? Uh, nah, because it's it's loud armor. So Nivar and Ark kind of wake up at the chink, chink, chink. Frostbear, on, on the other hand, does not. Of course, assuming the scene that wake up with axe in hand. And you I'm see play... Lord Draho sneaking towards a sleeping Frostgar. I decided to let it play out. With a very big, stupid grin on his face, too, while he's sneaking. <laughs> so you mean your face. Yeah. <laughs> so go ahead and make that uh, sleight of hand check to remove those boots. Awesome. I'm more curious at this point than anything. Oh, 19. All right, one more perception check for Oscar. <laughs> yep, you get those boots off. <laughs> All right, I'm going to hide the boots, and he's going to be barefoot for the next day. They were stolen while he was sleeping by a bandit. Maybe he'll <laughs> learn next time. <laughs> as, you, as you come by, do you look in my direction at all? What? No. I'm far too cunning for any of you. <laughs> you're all dead asleep. Okay, so as far, as far as you're concerned, I did not hear that. Gotcha. Yeah, nobody saw or heard what I did. I'm the master of stealth. Well, I, I would like to to make sure that I, uh, I hold in my laughter so it's not audible. Do I need to make it? No, you can go ahead and do that. I like that nobody knows why I took his boots. So as far as you guys are concerned, I just robbed the, one of the he was poor asleep, people's so boots. I think, that, I think at least I'm smart enough to put two and two together. And <laughs> no, I just gets louder over here. <laughs> so morning comes, everyone wakes up. Frostgar, yeah. your sans boots. And, and when obviously, you wake up. I'm gonna stay alert during the rest of his shift since he slept through it. Because but this is a prank I don't necessarily disagree. With. So <laughs> <laughs> guys, guys. There were bandits, and they stole my boots. What? I thought you were on watch. What's I was on? watching. They were well stole. enough if they got your boots your off. Your feet steal. I don't know why they steal my boots. Foot fetish. You just let them take your boots? I mean, there's a lot more valuable stuff to take. I'll let a lot of things slide. <laughs> hey, hey, hang on. And I, I rushed back out and ch uh, to pretend to check on the horses. Okay. They're still there, I imagine. They are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so we know it's not halflings. <laughs> <laughs> you guys gotta have me find my fetish. fetish. I, I don't know. Tell you what. Um, you start breaking down the camp. I will look for, a, I think I've got an extra pair of boots in the cart somewhere. I'll find Breaking down the camp. I, we, we, we stayed inside the mouth of the cave. Breaking down the camp is just putting out the fire. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, and of course, I make sure his boots are well hidden in the I'll, cart. I'll go ahead and drown the <laughs> fire and, you know, throw some more dirt on it. Okay. So, yes, he's going to be barefoot for the day. He's a Goliath. I don't think he minds. Yeah, not really. We will coincidentally find his boots. Well, sorry. We will find the boots I brought with me as backups in the cart for him after our day is over. Conveniently, your size, though. <laughs> No, I was going to be like, but these boots don't fit. You know, it's funny, as a leather worker, I actually can make boots, so I'll be like, look, if we, if we can't find your replacements, I'll just make these. Yeah. I didn't even know I was wearing boots until now. <laughs> I mean, if you weren't wearing boots, I will take something else off of you. Either way, I want a piece of clothing that will inconvenience you for the rest of the day. Just I'm make sure, sure I just wear shoes. Almost for us, right? Most people wear shoes. Yeah, <laughs> it's your shoes. <laughs> oh, anyway, um, those tracks that led to the northeast, you said? Uh, northwest. Northwest. Uh, easy enough, I know where I'm looking. Mm -hmm. point, right? Yep. Uh, your survival check to follow? Yep. Does anyone want to help me with this? Not trained in it, so it, probably it not help. So what are we doing? It's a perception? Uh, survival. It, it, it's survival. So um, you'd have to not fail by five. Uh, I'll it's give it. I'm no good at. I'm not good at that. Get a plus one. one. We don't even have. The, we don't have the person who has guidance either. This oh man. I don't know. I have guidance. You do? Yeah. Guide me. He, he's. I, I will give you guidance. Yay! It's about the Ooh. best I can do. 
Hey, well, hey, it's uh, anything's appreciated at this point. Oh, my D4 rolls are actually doing pretty good today. Uh, damn. Uh, 24. That'll do. So you're able to follow the tracks. It leads um, northwest, as as previously noted. It takes you about four hours to uh, follow, and then you come across what uh, looks like a um, walled off uh, out of wood kind of um, large encampment. And let's go ahead and pop that map out. Yes. Little for camp down there. Not be her. her. <laughs> <laughs> and we got the question mark again. Yep, I got that too. Yeah, it should uh, share through here momentarily. Guys, our sponsor, which we don't have. <laughs> yet. There's a worse part of me that really wants to not give him his boots back till we get back to town and then make him buy a new pair of boots at my clothier shop. Actually, you know what, you know what? Actually, on that note, guys, if you're looking for some wonderful, fine garments, head to the Lion's Head Beavers. <laughs> I'm not that mean yet. But that's what I want to do as a greedy person. <laughs> what, what? I mean, I mean, hey, it, it's it wouldn't be unreasonable for you to ask us to carry the logo around. That does benefit us in a roundabout way. Okay, okay. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and make like a perception or investigation to like look for like lookouts or sure. any any signs of people. And Let's go I with uh, perception. I uh, will. So 17 plus I, I'll, 3 is 20. 20. I will aid in that. Yep. Not that you're going to get higher than 17, but. Yep. Um, no, that's totally fine. Uh, at the moment, you don't see anyone out. Um, but with that high of check, you will notice some kind of uh, bloody stains um, in various places uh, around some of the uh, exterior watchtowers um, next to the front gates. Okay, at least to make sure that they had a... Uh... Are they fresh or old at this point? Um, fairly old. Yeah, okay. Let's go ahead and drop you guys in on this one. All right. Well, they seem to have made sure they had uh, pretty good visibility. Um, the smaller of the green thingies, are those bushes or just small trees? Small trees. Uh, the bushes are going to be the ones with the kind of flowery stuffs around them. All right. How high is the wall? Um, about 15 feet up. Okay, so this will actually take some climb. Mm -hmm. uh, the towers themselves? A uh, total of 20 feet up. Well, we have all this rope. Do we have grappling hooks? Not that I've seen on your character sheets. Oh, no. I was going to say, that's probably <laughs> something we should invest in when we get back to town. Um, game game of Earth, and we can just go under the gate. You can only move five feet of it at a time. Yeah, but if I move five feet out and then push it aside, I can move another five feet below that, and we'll just have a pile of dirt on the outside of the wall next to it. Yep, that will work. Um, and the gate, I assume, is big old wooden gate, or is it uh, metal? Uh, wooden gate. I mean, we can always try knocking it. Well, I mean, I can go just enough that we can get under the gate. We don't have to dig deep, but we should be able to go under the gate because it shouldn't be mounted into the ground. Okay. Not terribly um, so, no. Yeah. So we'll just dig a hole like yep. a dog. All right. You guys are able to tunnel underneath the gate. Um, go ahead and move yourselves where you'd prefer to be. Uh, I'm guessing not right... So we, we I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to be in the front because I'm using the mold earth. So I'll be right behind him. I'll be in the back. So guess I guess right that Kibble's probably third. Yeah. Well, Kibble's gonna stay in the far back because he's an archer by trade. That's... I would be in the far back if it wasn't for the fact, you know, things is happening. Ah, uh, hello. Know. Thank you. I love you. You're the best. Hmm. 
Homemade cookies in milk. <laughs> Yum. I don't know how to fix my token. Um, you should just be able to grab Click and go. Hey, your token's already on the map. You just got to move it. Way down at the bottom. Up there. Mm, chocolate chip. Nice. Oh, there it is. Okay. Getting used to the map mechanics. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so I'm going to wait for Raho to decide where he's running. Yeah, so once we're inside, I'm going to search for any signs of ambush, ambuscade. Okay, go for it. Uh, investigation check. Just run a small five foot hole, I'll have my uh, hand axe. So. Perception or investigation? Uh, investigation. Okay. You pop up and there's six crossbows at you. <laughs> I rolled a four. Yep. I assume that everything's clear. It it certainly looks that way. All right, then I'm going to move forward. All right. 10, 15, 20, 25, right about to here. Wow. <laughs> and I'm going to look around for uh, any signs of anything. Um, so far, it seems to be I'm, fairly empty. I'm going to go over here. I didn't see anything, so I'm acting like there's no threats. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be fair, do you consider anything a threat? Yeah. You, Most things are a threat to me. Okay. Well, seeing as everyone's coming in, I'm going to uh, try to sneakily look in this tent. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll stealth. Nineteen. Nineteen. That works. So uh, you look in the in the tent, um, and you can see uh, a pair of dead bodies. We'll worry about that later. What kind of bodies are they? Human, cobalt, humanoid. Okay. Medium size. Do yep. Do they look like miners or bandits? Um, more like bandits, but they're kind of uh, in shreds. And I shreds, mean, you say. Mm -hmm. Does this does this look like there's any like uh, medical stuff around here, like healing kits, bandages? Um, not that you see. Can I tell what kind of plants are around here? Uh, predominantly just trees, um, uh, a few little bushes, so like uh, the uh, little plant things that are next to each of the buildings are small bushes. Uh, the larger flowery ones are large bushes. So you said the bandit bodies were shredded. Correct. Can I use insight to determine, or is there some skill I can make to determine what happened to them, like how they were torn apart? Medicine? Kind of yeah, so medicine. Medicine, medicine, medicine. check probably determine if it's claws or blade. Mm -hmm. I just want to know if I know what's wrong with it. So that's uh, not going to be I well. Nope. Uh, you're Got not quite sure. <laughs> out of seven i know they were definitely not killed by natural causes that's about okay. it um i'm gonna yeah the, the one that navarre is going to i'm gonna kind of like point that we all kind of go that way i'm gonna check this one okay um, i'm gonna continue standing where i am with my bow drawn and an arrow nox now that i've seen dead bodies likewise in that building you also find another pair of dead corp uh, dead bodies uh i will medicine check to see if i can determine what killed these okay uh 13 um seems to be like um small bladed wounds could be daggers could be short swords okay so that I, I will go ahead and tell everybody hey it seems like it's it's not uh natural these are definitely bladed weapons Draw bladed weapons that means it was humanoids of some type probably or at least something oh. competent enough to carry a weapon Draho, could you do us a favor and maybe see if you can get a vantage point on one of the towers? I would be happy to hide in a tower. I mean, get up in a tower and search for a vantage point. Either okay. way. And I'm going to have Kibble go up in the other tower and look as well to see if he notices anything. Okay. It's our now. 
<laughs> uh, go ahead and roll um, perception again. Got a better view. Let's see if my perception goes better. And I'm gonna I'm gonna stay where I am, but I'm just waiting for a call. Eleven. That's yeah, a little better. Um, you don't see a whole lot, but there are uh, a variety of like blood stains uh, throughout the compound. Uh, I'm just gonna yell down. There's blood everywhere. I don't think anything survived whatever came through here. Let's be thorough. Um, okay. And Ivar these, is gonna make her way to this and, building. And, and, oh, I'm gonna go to oh, actually. Actually, if, if I can get to Navarro before she opens the door, I'm gonna be like. Maybe I should go first. I'm going to check the well. Uh, I'll stand back and let Hart go first. All right. Um, I will... Within that oh. building, uh, again, you find five more dead bodies looking very much in the same kind of vein that the rest have been. Um, and the again, well itself us... looks like a well. <laughs> okay. And, and these, again, to us, look like they're more like bandits than they would be miners. Correct. So there's nothing in the well? Other than water? Just water in a bucket. Quick question, because this will be relevant in a minute. Do the bandits still seem to have all of their hands? They do. Hmm. For now. Easy. So we've ruled out cultists and mindless monsters, leaving only I'm bandits or kobolds. Just making sure we get paid. What is... Oh, that's a that's a fire pit. Never mind. Yep. This um, looks funny. I'm going to move up to uh, this building and uh, anyone, yeah, anyone who wants to follow. Well, at this point, I'm useless to you as an archer. So. Uh, uh, if I draw them out, actually, if I let them come out of there, you're perfectly fine. Okay. Well, I'm sure Kibble you're, is useless still, as an archer with this short bow. So. So. Besides, that... I didn't, didn't even know you're there necessarily. So I'll open this one. That one contains two more bodies. And everybody go ahead and roll me um, base intel checks. Something I might be good at. Just kidding. All right. Just about to say, why are you good at that? I'm not. Two. Uh, that looks like a... Got the thing in front of it. Eleven. Is this the part where Akbar tells us it's an elaborate ruse? Something like that. Um, uh, what that uh, gives is while the bodies um, are all somewhat mutilated, um, they're all placed in their beds, and some of those blood stains look like they're drag stains. Like they were foot stains? Correct. Like, or uh, like the body was dragged. dragged. They were put there on purpose. I immediately, like, get into a fighting sense. Something's wrong about this situation. Uh, Kibble and I are unaware of any of that happening. <laughs> uh, I'm actually getting, look, if, if, if anything's trying to trap us here, it knows we're here by now. At least that's my thinking. Yeah. Uh, Nivar's gonna, like, kind of, like, wave her arms and beckon Lord Draho down. Okay, Kibble and I will catch up to him. I'm assuming that the people who passed that intelligence check told me that they pointed that out to me. The, the fact that you were put back in their beds. I mean, I got an 11. If I passed it, then when I get up there, I'd point it out to you. Yep. Uh, anything over a 10 will do. Yeah. I'd definitely be like, oh, they were dragged to the beds. Can I walk up and check the pulse on one of those dead bodies I... if it's actually dead? Yeah, give it another medicine check. Also, while he's doing that, checking for any, any. Really, I need to do a medicine check to determine if I can feel breathing or. Yep, it, it's what medicine is for. Oh uh, <laughs> God! Watch me fail this and say that they're all zombies and start stabbing them. I was, uh, I, I was looking for any additional tracks that seemed like to, to like indicate that there was a fight going on, Ooh. or like to like show see the grooves where they were dragged from. Eleven medicine. Are they actually dead? They are actually dead. Okay. okay so what, what, what would my check be? Survival. Yep. Eighteen. Eighteen. Um, so definitely grooves of uh, where they were all dragged from. Um, it, 
various different points throughout kind of the uh, space. Um, a chunk are coming from each of the guard towers, um, some from the fire pit where uh, food's kind of it, cooking and still burning. Am I able to determine what the freshest tracks are where they leave? Uh, with an 18, yes. It seems to be headed towards the main house at the top. I'm going to point at it. E either they see us or they don't. But, and at this point, they know we know something's up if they do spot us. Um, are there windows in the front of that big building? Uh, there are not. Everyone, I'll go. I'll go everyone, open the door. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm going to go up to the door and press my back against it and be like, everyone against the wall. Uh, you sure you want me there? Okay. I mean, you could be further away and just have your back to the wall so you have cover. And if there's windows on the top floor or something, they can't shoot. Okay. I'll get there. Um, Frostgar, are you sure you want to be on the door? No, I couldn't move it for a second. Oh, do you sure you want to be right on the door? <laughs> Okay, so what do you want me to do? Uh, you bust the door open, I point my bow in there and shoot the first thing that twitches? Well, basically, I am going to uh, knock. And what happens from there happens. Are you knocking with your maul? Yes, I am. That's, that's <laughs> yeah, I figured. Um, and before I do that, because I have no idea what I'm running into, I will shift before entering there. Okay. Like, on the turn. So, like... As I'm taking the swing, I'm just, boom, uh, I will roll for my 10 hit points. Woo! Okay, so that's going to be uh, 14 10 hit points. Okay. <laughs> that's the difference between rolling minimum and max. <laughs> All right. Um, and then I will swing my maul to cave in the door. All right. Give me a strength check. Okay. Um, I only get the advantage when I'm raging, right? Correct. Okay. Well, we're not the. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> uh, so your your maul swings into the door, but it, it kind of swings in sideways, and you just hear this loud thud. I'm sorry. The I, door I got a drink moves in a little bit and then replaces back to where it was at. Okay. Well, that. So much for the surprise round. <laughs> uh, can, can I make this an attack roll instead? Sure. Um, I don't have to be raging to do it recklessly, right? No. No. Reckless attack on the door. That's <laughs> 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 a fourteen. Well, that'll definitely hit. Go ahead and roll damage. I love the idea of let's shock and awe, them, and we're just like that video of those cops with the battering ram that keeps smashing the same <laughs> door for like an hour. <laughs> They, they, they don't bother to back up. They just do it from where they're standing again. Uh, ten, 10 damage. 10 damage? Okay. So the, the door splinters open as you hit it. Um, inside, uh, you you see a pair of dead bodies in the uh, the bed that's there. Uh, blood stains all over this building. I'll head in. Okay. That was good. If there's still something in here... If they didn't know we're here, they definitely know now. <laughs> uh, I will follow in and investigate. All right. Uh, 18. 18. So the, the first thing you notice is uh, the map on the table. Um, inspecting that, there's a X marked next to uh, a place that's on the Earth Fast Mountains. Okay, uh, we should take the map with us. Additionally... I'll take mine. Yep. Additionally... Uh, some gold pieces sitting over on the table, and um, some studded leather armor. Oh. Uh, what size creature? Desert medium? Correct. Uh, <laughs> only two gold pieces on the table. Okay. Add it to uh, the loop for dividing later. All right, so unless anybody wants it, I'm going to swap to the studded leather. I, don't and I think it's pretty much below what I'm currently wearing. My oh, my muscles are the armor I Pretty sure I'm in chain mail. Is that a lantern? It is. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. So that should give me a 15 AC now. Nice. So yeah, take that. Save the old armor. You can sell it back in town. Um, so we still haven't uh, looked into that, uh, that last building that it, I definitely don't know is a store. Sorry, say yeah. that again? I said, we still have to check that one last building that I definitely do not know is a storehouse. No, it is definitely a storehouse. <laughs> so, um, a couple blood stains in here, and then uh, beyond that, there's um, effectively food stores, um, much of which seems to be kind of uh, rotting or being eaten by bugs. Did we take the map? Mm -hmm. We did. Okay. Uh, okay. I say we salvage any salvageable stuff from the storage, food or whatnot, and load it in the second wagon for transport back to town. And also start taking hands. Yeah, I I wasn't going to suggest it, but how does he know these people weren't bandits? How do we know they weren't bandits? I, I mean, they, they, do they seem dead freshly enough that it looks like we just killed them? Uh, close enough. It doesn't matter. Probably the within we get the back day. To town, yeah, by the time we get back to town, they'd be dried hands. Yeah. I would say, too, you know what, too? Um, even if the foodstuffs are, are bad and eaten, the containers are still good. Also true. Oh, uh, Navarra, one other thing that you would have noticed on that investigation check would have been a uh, blood stain heading towards the, uh, the boar's head that's hung up against the wall. All right, I'm going to investigate the boar's head, then. All right. Um... Uh... I'm also going to guide myself. Good plan. <laughs> and and uh, while this is happening, I'll just watch to see what happens. Uh, 14. Fourteen. That'll do. Um, so as you're kind of fiddling with the boar's head, you, you end up pulling on one of the tusks, which clicks down, and it opens up, and there's a path that leads behind it. Well, shit. Which I now see! Might want to check this out, guys. Yep, I say we bring our wagons inside this little thing, repair where I dug out the soil under the wall, so we're basically barricaded in this thing. And then, uh... Hide the carts, hide the horses. Yeah, pretty much. Plus, it'll be easier to bring the carts over here to load all those supplies in it on our way back out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm good. I will take point down this uh, secret pathway thingy. Uh, it is 10 o'clock and we're about to enter a dungeon. Do you guys want to call it for the week? Just curious I mean, before we jump into that. I don't know if anyone else has any... I mean, uh, I hate to med on this, but the thing we're going into looks pretty small. Well, I guess metagame. Is it bigger than it seems? It is. Yeah. Oh no, we're dealing with Time Lords. <laughs> I just figured that was just the entrance to it. Then yeah, that's a good place to stop. Yeah, that seems like a good plan. All right. Sounds good. So we'll go ahead and pause here, and you guys can uh, enter that additional little hut next game. Sweet. Guys, we took them all out like it was nothing. <laughs> yes. Actually, that last building over to the right there that just looks dirt floor, is that stables? It is. Okay, so yeah, that's that's what we'll put the freaking horses in. Yeah, okay. we'll stable them up if we've got any um, grains from the warehouse there that are salvageable. Let's salvage some tea oh. at least with the horses something to do. Yep, yeah. that you'll be able to do. And park and the wagons I, in front of this storehouse. I, I will take a moment. Do, do we happen to find any, like, chain by chance? Um, chain give me an investigation rope. check. There's rope. Uh, well, rope will be plan B. Uh, that's going to be an eight. Eight? No, unfortunately not. Anybody okay. else want to try? Then I, I will, uh, no. I will uh, tell you. Uh, I'll Listen. give it a shot. Uh, no, that's a five. Okay. It was perception? Uh, investigation. Investigation. Not bad at it, so. You have a high intelligence. Ten. Ten will do. Um, so as you're kind of parsing through things, you notice that uh, one of the barrels is kind of tipped slightly sideways. And as you push it over, you see some chain underneath. 
Is there a okay. lock? Uh, not with the chain, no. Okay, well, I, 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 anyone who tries to come in and take our horses, I want to make it kind of uh, difficult, at, at least time consuming to do. So I'm going to take that chain and wrap it around the stable door after we've got the horses in there. Okay. Um, and then use something to be sort of the uh, the thing that secures it. I, I don't know if it can be used for anything, but I do have prestidigitation now. That does not help in this particular situation. I didn't know if it had anything that allows it to. I'll, 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 leave, I'll, I'll leave some slack on either end of the chain after, you know, before it's wrapped and then after, and then I will loop some more rope into it, and I'll put that like on the inside. Sure. And I assume that's kind of like window thing that I can fall back out of. Yep. All right. Okay. So at least if they're gonna, at least if they're gonna take it, they're gonna have to work for it. It gives us a little time to turn away. Okay. So as, as you're getting done with that arc, uh, go ahead and make a perception check. Oh shit. Uh, 10. Well, that'll actually do, because uh, I only rolled a 4. So uh, as you're walking away, you see Kibble walk up, snap a lock on it, turn the lock, and walk away. <laughs> Does Kibble see me? Nope. And that's why you pay for butlering school. <laughs> <laughs> Where did he get lock money? <laughs> I pay him. You guys no, act I, like I, I don't pay I him. To pay him at this point. No, you pay me. <laughs> like I said, I pay you to pay him at this point. That's... Yeah. Yeah. He'll get his share. Hey, 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 to be fair, that's a good investment on my part because he did exactly what I wanted to happen. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. We all win. <laughs> Basically, at this I, point, you're paying I, my... I feel like, as I see him doing that, I'm just kind of like laugh and shake my head and let him think I didn't notice. <laughs> and I'm going to let you keep paying for my servant's upkeep. All right. All of our relationship. So, Kibble. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll go ahead and pause there. Um, awesome. Go ahead and shoot me notes on what you guys want to do with that uh, extra equipment um, between sessions. Uh, we'll deal with it that way and uh, make updates to any monetary values that are necessary uh, and just say that it happened prior to this portion of the adventure. Gotcha. All right. With that, you guys have yourselves a wonderful night, and we'll see you next week. Have a good one. Have a good one, guys.